Hello everyone, in the next 8 hours we are diving into the world of 3JS to craft an interactive 3D art gallery. This is what we are going to build. So usually I go in Windows plus R, write CMD, open the terminal, here in the terminal, CD desktop, so I will create my project on the desktop, then MKDIR, this creates a folder in the desktop, and the name of the project, so art gallery simply okay we created the folder let's get into this folder cd art gallery okay and now let's open it in our vs code we usually use vs code is the best editor out there so code and dot okay we are in the vs code we have this folder now we need to create some files that we need usually we need a html file uh, of course a css file for the styles and also the functionality that is the js file with javascript okay uh, if you don't know, we are working with this project. We will work with this with 3JS, okay? 3JS is a cross-browser JavaScript library and application programming interface used to create and display animated 3D computer graphics in a web browser using WebGL, okay? Uh, the source code is on GitHub. It's open source. So it's a very nice library. I really like it. I am a fan of 3D. Usually I I used to work with Unity, Unity 3D. In my opinion, Unity is the best ever tool out there for me. But I really like also 3JS. If you want to create games, etc. Unity is, is like the best tool for me, also Unreal, but I am a Unity fanboy. But if you want to work in a browser with 3D models or, you know, 3D programming for web applications, 3JS is the best choice. There is also Babylon JS. It's also great and it's maintained from Microsoft. But yeah, I think 3JS it's very uh, easy. I mean very easy. It's like let's say easy compared to, you know, uh, other frameworks that has a very steep learning curve. But 3JS, if you know JavaScript, it's very easy to get into if you are a JavaScript developer. Okay? So, no more talking. 
let's create let's create first uh, an HTML file okay we need an HTML file so index.html okay let's create the template so you just simply write the exclamative uh, I don't know in English but I think it's called like that okay so we have the template right let's create uh, immediately the other files so we have the structure you know the structure of the project and so slowly we can build the project okay so the index html create one let's create a folder so it's better to keep the files on folders with a specific name so js for example we have here the files uh, javascript files that there might be many files or only one file one main file maybe we can create everything inside one file but we might need other files so let's create a folder js let's create the css folder also oh it's created inside oh sorry oh, come on delete permanently okay css folder okay let's also create the file so style that css okay and also a main js file main.js all right so we have here uh, what is important and i think we can do it since the beginning we should import the module of 3js so we need a module uh, by 3js you can go to google and uh, simply search 3JS, GitHub module or something like that. And here you will see, this is the Mr. Dub. It's the maintainer and creator of 3JS. And you can download the file here. If you are familiar with GitHub, you already know. If you are not familiar with GitHub, uh, here in the green button, click the green button. Uh, download the zip file and inside what we really need we don't need everything here actually so it's uh, it's not very light it's like there are many files here many files but what we need is inside inside the build okay inside the build folder so after you download it I already have it that's why I'm I don't have a problem I already have it. If you don't want to go through this, I will I will post this project, the whole project on my GitHub. So you can simply go and copy the file in my GitHub. If you want to know this, because maybe you will need it with other projects that you will create yourself. So it's good to know. We, you will do this every every time. You will need this. Inside the build folder, you will need this 3.js file or 3.mine.js. It's the minified version. So the minified version or the 3.js. This is for modules. It's like you, if you are familiar with ES6, etc. It's like built. Uh, but for now, you, you just need this one, 3.js or the minified version. I will go with the, this file, 3.js. Okay, so here, code download. I have it here, so I go and will copy it. So three file, let me go to this folder. So reveal in file explorer. I will put it here, all right. I am not using the minified version, but the minified is lighter. Anyway, 
this is just the purpose of a tutorial. Let's go back. So we have the 3JS here. Okay. Let's create, if you want to take a look inside, maybe it's, you know, it has classes, etc. About every everything you see is pretty, pretty big. It's there are there are a lot of classes, methods, functions, and every everything about 3JS that we will need to, to, to create and do 3D programming. Okay, but let's leave this for the advanced guys. So let's go to our HTML files. Mm, let's change the title first. Art gallery. Okay, maybe let's add the CSS file. So let's add it now. And uh, we will need it later. So uh, here about add link. Okay. Style sheet, so href, uh, it will be in this folder, CSS. So CSS, style CSS, okay. Great, so let's build a file. Maybe first let's open this in our browser. So go live here, go live. Go live or click the right and then open with live server or the shortcut alt plus l alt, alt plus o okay so here is our project it's here on this uh, address in our local we don't see anything because we don't have anything so let's create some files here so we can see what we will need. We will need, you know, the we will need the background, the main background that we'll have, I don't know, we'll have the scene of our project. Then uh, another, it will be a div. So then another div inside will be the main container, maybe. Uh, then an H1. We will make like a, we will make like a menu when we first click uh, our project. It will open up a menu with some information, you know, the title, art gallery, etc. And maybe some instructions or, you know, it's up to you. Actually, it's up to you. But let's make a very easy one, a very simple one. So let's create a main div and let's give it a class name of background or background menu. So if you want to be, if you want to have some shortcuts to be a good developer, if you don't know, maybe many of you already know these things, you know, so don't bear with me. Maybe some others are beginners and uh, they would like to know these shortcuts to be fast and you know pro tips so if you want to create a div not going to div and then give it a class you know so div then go and class and then add the class name menu etc there are some pro tips so you can be quicker and faster so dot and the name of the class the name of the class will be, for example, background menu. So dot background menu. Enter. This is the Emmet abbreviation. And you see it's quick and it's fast. It's a nice shortcut. Oh, it's my, oh my God. It's my copilot. Okay. So again, you will make you will create another div with another class, the same thing, so dot and put the name of the class. It will create a div with a class name ready. Okay, so 
go with these things and you are quicker. Or if you don't want the class, but you want maybe an ID, so this uh, sign of the ID, and then put the, the name of the ID that you want and enter. It will create the div with ID menu. Okay, what we need, and then inside this menu we will inside will menu we will add the title uh, maybe we will add an image okay we want a nice image we want to show this gallery before and maybe click a button like uh, explore explore the gallery or enter the gallery uh, etc so we have a menu div let's add the yeah, let's add an, an image. Let's create a div with uh, image container. So ID and uh, image container, okay? And inside, let's add an image. Okay, this will be the source. I will add the image now and, uh, you know, just menu pick, doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, let's add the, the picture. Yeah, let's add the picture. Oh, this is my picture stunt. <laughs> uh -huh. Where do I have those pictures? I have some. Okay, I want to add this, the stay night, that's why. Maybe create a folder for this. Yeah, let's create a folder for this. Image. Let's add it inside. Okay. Let's add a source. So image stay night great let's change the alt here stay night good okay we see something here in our browser so what else what else we need uh yeah we need the title you know the menu we need the title so a title and a description, maybe. Mm. Yeah, a title and a description. Okay, so title, image, uh, description, what else we may need? We may need like, uh, or maybe let's keep it simple. Yeah, let's keep it simple for now. Let's add maybe an image, a title and uh, a description okay so this is for the title and uh, yeah, let's give it for now ID. this is will be the content the content and yeah on each one that will be art gallery. Okay. And uh, it will also have the description. And uh, inside, let's create a P, a P tag with a description. This is an Interactive uh, 3D gallery. Okay. Uh, description. Mm, maybe some other description if you want. Made with love and 3JS. And 3JS. Okay. What else? Yeah, we see something here. 
what else what else uh, yeah maybe we will need like some instructions how to move what we will do etc etc right okay so instructions maybe p tag always instructions and here p tag again move left or right it doesn't matter arrow so arrows and look around look around with mouse yeah uh, let's add maybe a button to start to play mm, it's like just play enter Gallery. Okay. Let's give an ID to this one. Play button. Okay. Okay. It is something. Also also we need the scripts okay we also need the scripts we will add here the 3.js script so and you uh, you should keep in mind something here at the script and here in the script src we will put our 3.js okay you should keep in mind always always uh, add the 3.js script before everything else okay so above all at the top you add this script of 3.js and below you add the main.js file etc etc okay so like this it will be uh, js you don't need the dot and you know so simply JS, no main JS, it's 3JS. So JS, 3JS. Okay, this is it. Another script. Okay, you see how I copy it? You can put, you can press Shift, Alt, and the down arrow. And you copy like this, okay? So Shift Alt and the uh, arrow down. Let's change this one. This is for the main JS, JS, main JS, okay? Uh, so we have pretty much everything here for the HTML. Maybe we should add the styles, and then we can work for the real project with JavaScript and create everything. Set up 3.js, set up the canvas, uh, the camera, render, um, objects, and you will see yourself, everything else, okay? So, styles. Let's set some styles. Maybe if you don't want to follow along about styles, if this really doesn't interest you, the HTML, you can look uh, the final result or just grab and copy and paste from my GitHub. So just don't, don't worry. Or just forward. I will add some styles here. There is nothing to really explain. So we'll have this style, so why this keep? Okay, there are also some shortcuts, shortcuts for, for the CSS. If you don't know, those are our beginners. So for example, I want the width 100%. So not going width and then a 100. I can simply write uh, W and 100. Enter. 
and very quick. The same age 100 quickly for the font size F, uh, S, and uh, 12 size. You have the font style or font size, or sorry, it's font style. I need the font size. Okay, whatever. But yeah, there are these shortcuts also. Color, let's give it like I have some. This is the result of the CSS style. You can copy this in my GitHub. So let's leave the CSS and uh, let's open our JS, JS file. And here it starts the 3JS project. So we want to click this enter the gallery. After clicking it, uh, the menu will hidden and we will see this 3D object where we can interact and move around. Uh, we will put um, a big box there. You know, we will put um, the floor, we will put the walls and then create create you know the paintings that will be some some planes and we can put there attach uh, a texture and let's see together but first of all we need some main and important things when we create a 3js project that pretty much you will do uh, every single time these are the main concepts and the main things you would need in a 3JS project. So everything you will work here in this file, you will work by using this file here, 3JS, that inside it has everything. And if you want to check it yourself, you can console log this big object because this is an object. It's a very big object. If you want, you can console log it and see yourself add inside uh, the three so uppercase three oh sorry sorry okay three let's check Let's console log. Fade rule ourselves. Three is not defined. Okay, let's see. Let's see here. I think it's a problem here. SRC, JS, 3JS, SRC, JS, main JS. Okay, guys, I stopped the video for a moment. I went and I drank some water. I changed my t shirt. I have my piggy blinders hat and got myself a cup of coffee. Uh, no, I don't drink coffee. I take tea, my dear, like the song by Sting. Actually, it's ginseng, not a coffee. Uh, for my brain, my small brain. Okay, so this, uh, we had this error. And it's, it's just a stupid error, actually. It's Usually when you see this error, like uh, you cannot get the 3JS and because execute, because it's minor type, etc, etc. It's just, most probably we just uh, mistyped here the source. Uh, 
put seven here. I don't have a script. Okay, so it's just here the problem. Maybe we uh, have a wrong path or mistype, or maybe you are uh, directing a path that it's not a JS script, but it's like a CSS or JSON, or etc. For example, I am just make this stupid errors sometimes. So I didn't see that uh, 3JS is inside the JS folder and I thought it's inside, but not, it's not inside. It's outside, as you can see. So let's put it inside the JS folder because you see the path JS, 3JS. Okay, it's inside. It should uh, work now and the error should, okay, it's gone. Is gone. Uh, I was showing you before this three object. Let's give it a name. Okay. Let's take a look here. Console log. You see three object here, and this is a very very big object it has like everything inside you know everything that we might need to work you see if i go and click on any of this you there are a lot of things uh, inside of that okay so the three library this file that we imported uh, contains most of the classes and properties that usually we might need on a classic project with 3.js, okay? But, but sometimes not every class that we might need is inside of this, but we will talk about it maybe later when we will go through that problem, okay? Because sometimes we need some other classes that are not inside this three and we should import it from another source. Okay, but for now, let's leave it. So, comment this one. So, guys, we have the HTML file. Okay, here. We have like the styles. You can copy the CSS styles if uh, just don't worry about that, just copy and paste the styles. Uh, we are not here to learn CSS, but we are here to, to do something with 3JS and 3D, okay? So we have HTML, we have the styles. Now we want to add the interactivity, the functionality with JavaScript or more exactly with 3JS library. And uh, where to start? Where to start? We will start by creating the canvas. And then we will add a camera, like in a movie scene. Okay, because the canvas, there is the scene. We will need a camera, like in a movie scene. And then we will need a renderer. So we will create the renderer to render the scene and the camera, uh, we may have lights, uh, shadows, and everything. Also, in our scene, we want to add the 3D models. Okay? So, our gallery, uh, cubes, uh, and every kind of shapes that 3JS has the possibility to to work with, with, with those geometries, okay? So, first of all, the first thing, let's create the scene. The most important thing and the first thing we should do. Create the scene, okay? So, for that, we just normally, uh, we just create a variable with the, with the scene, okay? And just save it there. There are different methods 
to work here. We can just work by creating the variables, the functions, uh, etc. Or we can create a, an object and put everything inside this object. Okay. It's like uh, replicating the namespace in C sharp. Okay. If some one of you uh, is using C sharp, especially with game development, you create like a namespace. Uh, JavaScript doesn't have a namespace. Uh, it's something that it's called God object, okay, where you put all your variables, functions that then are methods, etc. Okay, but let's keep it simple because I think we can do everything inside one single file in, inside this main.js. Okay, so we are not going through that you know pattern of object oriented etc with objects so just we can simply create so let scene or const scene because the scene usually you will not change it so it's a constant so const scene equal and here the keyword new to create a new scene this is, you have to be familiar with object-oriented programming because you have classes and then you instantiate a new object with the properties of the, the class. So in this case, we are just keep it simple for this kind of explanations. New, think about it, just a new, a new thing that we are creating, okay? With some properties that it has uh, with itself. In this case, we are creating a new scene. New, uh, let's call three, okay? And then with dot, oh, sorry, it's just my, sorry. New, three, okay? And then with dot operator, oh my God, why is this calling? Three, and then scene. With that operator, we access uh, the properties inside this 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 class, the the main class of three. It may have uh, other classes. It may have you know uh, functions, methods, uh, properties, uh, and everything else. Okay, so three dot sync and parentheses, and that's it. This is our scene. Let's put some comments. I will let some comments during the, the tutorial. So when you get the code uh, on GitHub, you also have it commented. So if you forget or, you know, it's just for the beginners is easier. So create the scene, this one. What else? As we said, we need the camera. So let's create a new camera, like in a movie set. You know, we have the scene. Imagine, imagine this scene. To 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 see this scene, we need a camera to 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 look and because when we render, it will be through, uh, you know, the eye of our camera. Okay. So the same thing as we did with uh, the the scene to to create uh, a new a new camera. We simply go by just const camera because it will be again a constant. So const camera and with the specific class from three library that it's called perspective camera. And I will explain it now. Okay. So const camera equal. So again, new. And again, three from the three library, we are accessing this three here. This time we are accessing perspective camera. Okay. And it accepts some parameters that I will explain now. But const camera new three perspective camera. 
The camera uh, actually is not uh, visible. We cannot see this camera. It's more like a, a point of view. Okay? So when we will do the render later of our scene, it will be from this point of view. So from the camera's point of view, we will render the scene. Of course, like in a movie scene, there are different types of cameras and maybe we will talk about it uh, later if we will need it, not for now. For now, we will simply use uh, this one, the perspective camera. It's like the perspective is like making close objects look more prominent than the, than the far objects, the objects that are far, okay? So that's it. To create, you use this one. Uh, using this class, perspective camera, there are two main parameters that we need to provide inside. There is the field of view and there is the aspect ratio. I think you may know what the aspect ratio is. It's like width divide by height okay width divide height you say the the aspect ratio the field of view is uh, how large our vision angle is so for instance if we use a very large angle we will be able to see in every direction at once but it will be with much distortion okay because the result will be drawn in small rectangle but okay leave it for now if we use a small angle things will look zoomed in so the field of view is uh, expressed in degrees and uh, it corresponds to to the vertical vision angle so here, for instance, we will give these parameters. So, seventy-five. Okay, and this is the field of view. It's like you know what I found that it's 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 the correct let's say, but you can play with this depending on the project. So the field of view and we also said a few moments ago, we have the aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio is width divide height. In this case, uh, what we are dividing here, the width of what? The, the width of the, 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 the canvas that we have, the scene. So in this case, we want it, uh, we don't want to, to, to put sizes, okay? We, we will get the width of the window. So the width of the whole window divide by the width, the height of the whole window. So we keep that ratio, but using the window object, that it's the... Uh, the window object of, of the browser, okay? So, window dot inner width. If you click the dot, it you will show, you know, the properties. Divide by window dot inner height. Okay? And that's it. A comment here, so you have it clear. Uh, aspect ratio. Okay, then you, as a third parameter and other parameters, you can also add if you want, depending on the project. But this is, for example, 0 0.1. It's for the near clipping plane and also the far that I can put here, 1000. Okay far and near 
and that's it for the camera that's it for the camera we don't see anything because we don't have anything in our scene we added the camera because the camera is not visible but anyway uh, we created the camera but we always need when we create an object or when we create something in our canvas we need to add this to our scene so for that we have scene.add okay and as a parameter we add the camera this okay let's put some comments here scene camera so we divide it some categories if you want also to search and you it's easier okay we have the camera uh, there is something that uh, we you should not forget you should not forget for example if we have something in our scene we we cannot see it because we the camera when you create the camera by default the camera is in you know it's in in the zero axis so we cannot see it it's like the camera is it's it's near the the, the renderer so to 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 make it possible to to look at the things we need to pull it back a little okay so the position of the camera in the z axis will we will pull it back to, to be able to, to, to see. It's not a problem now because we don't have anything, but it will be an issue later. So camera that position. So we get the position property and then Z in the Z axis and a number five, for example. Okay. And this move the camera back five units good and this is done what's the next step the next step is the renderer we need a renderer also the canvas there are usually two ways someone will create a canvas here create a canvas okay and then uh, this canvas then access uh, the canvas with a property like document that gets element by ID or by class you give you give a class or ID to, to the canvas here in the HTML and access that and save it in a variable or you can simply create the renderer as we will do now without uh, creating the canvas there and access it with document get element by id okay so let's go for it and let's explain some basic things about the the renderer we will ask the renderer to render our scene from the camera point of view, as we mentioned before. And the result will be drawn into the canvas. Okay? So, we mentioned that we can create the canvas by ourselves or let the renderer generate it and then add it to our page, so to our document uh, body, HTML. To create the renderer, we use the WebGL renderer class. As we did before with perspective camera class, uh, this time we will use the WebGL renderer class with one parameter. And that one parameter is an object. You will see now. Render. Letter const render.
always new three and we mentioned we will use the webgl renderer class okay so to create the renderer we use this class webgl renderer okay and it accepts one parameter that it's an object okay and that's it it's just 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 this one uh, if we created the canvas here as we said before we will pass the canvas inside the renderer okay or let the renderer create that camera okay in this case in this case i didn't uh, create a canvas in our html so i'm just leaving like that with the empty object inside mm, this accepts some other properties for example like anti alias okay i will explain uh, what it is And this is for anti-alias means for smooth edges. For the geometries, it will give like smooth edges later when we, we will add some geometries. Okay. So we have the scene, we have the camera and we have the renderer. But we are not finished with the renderer. Uh, we just uh, created a new instance, but we will set the size of the renderer. Okay. So to set the size, render that set size. And again, for the aspect ratio, we will use window dot inner width and uh, window inner height. So we will give these two parameters as the the size to set the size. It sets the size of the render. In this case, the size will be the width of the window and the height of the window. Okay. I hope it's clear. Window dot uh, inner width. And window that inner height. Okay, perfect. We set the size of the render. You can also add a background color for the render for the canvas. You can do it now. Or you can do it later. Doesn't matter, but yeah since we are here we can give like a white symbol and uh, the property to 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 change the the color is set clear color it's not very intuitive but anyway and there are some ways to to change this to give uh, a color you can give it like with quotes like blue, red, etc., or hexadecimal, and you know, you know those things. So let's give it zero x and f f f f f is just for the white one, and this is the background color. And this is done. The last thing you should not forget, as we mentioned before, we will add this render to our HTML. For that, document that body dot append child. Okay, and inside render uh, render yes render dot dom element dom element okay and that's it let's add a comment here so 
at the render to our HTML. And this is done. What else we can do? We are still not seeing anything because we don't have geometries, we don't have anything in our scene. So our movie scene has no actors, has no nothing. It's like empty. We only have the camera and we are looking to an empty scene. We can also add the lights. Let there be light. Okay. We can add like spotlights, ambient lights. Mm, all these lights have some properties like uh, one has the property it lights the scene uh, as a sun another one has some spotlights or point lights we have different lights uh, the lights we can create a whole uh, new tutorial only about lights and shadows it's very interesting actually but for this tutorial, we need just one or two simple lights to, to, to light the scene. Lights. Let there be light. One light that we mentioned, it is the, the ambient light. The ambient light is like a soft light, but that lights everything, all the objects in the scene, but equally. Okay. So let ambient light equal. Again, I think now you are used to it. New, new keyword. Again, three, call it three. Ambient light. Uh, why it's not suggesting me this uh, I think it should suggest me the keywords normally but anyway we give a, a color to the light it's like zero in this case it's just zero one zero one zero one zero okay also one point zero. This is for the color, the first parameter, for intensity, okay, again, uh, you also have some other parameters like distance and decay, but we are not using it if you just want to, distance, um, decay, but yeah, okay, so we have our ambient light. Also, we can, as we did with the camera, we can give this light a position where we want to 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 put this 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 light. where we want to put to put this ambient light. In this case, uh, we can put it in the position of the camera. Where is the camera? We want that light. The camera moves. It update lights with the position of the camera. Okay. So, ambient light, our variable, that position, I think you guessed it, that position, uh, equal, in this case, camera, that position, okay, and that's it, again, some comments, light follows camera on Instagram, okay, so lights follows camera, and uh, I think many of you didn't forget that when we create something in our scene, we should not forget to add these things to our scene with the, with the add property. So scene that add inside ambient light. Okay. And the light is created. We can add 
not only the ambient light, uh, we also have some, we have different lights, but we can add at least another one, the directional light. And the directional light is a light source that act, acts like the sun. Like, you know, in the, in the real life, it acts like the sun. That it illuminates all objects in the scene equally, you know, from specific direction. Okay, so the directional light, it, it, it's like the sun and it, it shines through and lights in a specific direction that we, we are using it. Okay. So let, uh, let's call it sun, sunlight, again, new, you are getting used to it, okay, so the more you practice, the more you just get also in, in, in uh, intuitive way, okay, even if you have not clear the, the object-oriented programming pattern, so you just you just get it i'm creating something new here and you know it's the new keyword so new again three access the three library and uh, here directional light again we give it some color and intensity one two three four five and intensity 1.0 color intensity and we are done with the lights but of course you didn't forget again that we will always add these objects these things in our scene okay so again scene data uh, sunlight. Now it's done. We can also give some position. Since we said that this is a directional light, we can give some position to it. In this case, since it's a, a sun, we will give a position in the y-axis. Okay, so it's like like this up and down like the sun it's like we give it a, a direction in this axis the y-axis uh, we will do it before adding it so sunlight that position you see, you see that it's very intuitive it's like not saying easy but you you you, you can get through it if you know javascript it's that's why i like 3js it's intuitive, it's, 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 it's a nice library. So, sunlight dot position dot y in the y axis. Let's uh, give it 15. So, we have seen with camera, we have the renderer added to our HTML, and uh, we have the lights in the end uh, we want we want to, to 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 add the scene and the camera to to the render we need a render because the render is like the screenshot okay for the screenshot we need the camera and the scene that we are taking that screenshot okay so camera and scene that we are taking that screenshot, like a screenshot. So we need the render. And to get the render, we access the render variable that we created here above, this one. So render. And for this renderer, 
dot render yeah it's a words play uh, with the parameters scene and camera because as we said to take the render to take that screenshot we need the camera and the scene that we are we are screenshotting okay uh, some things to remember maybe if you don't see nothing after you create objects in the scene you we you should take in mind that uh, you should specify the position of the objects or the position of our camera so we should not forget the camera it should be like pulled back a little so we can see things because if not it's like i i i, I go near the, the 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 camera of my laptop so i cannot see anything or read in the book it's like going like this so of course i cannot see anything so i just need to put my eyes my field of view a little bit back so pull them back later when we will create the the objects you should also keep in mind to see the position of the objects if you are not seeing anything render in the scene okay so we need to move things uh, many times with 3js and that's it for now that's it for the main things the the main concepts of of, of the scene of the canvas of 3js now we are going to, to add some objects and we want to see something because we still don't see something this is just html it doesn't have nothing to do with the canvas it has nothing to do with the 3 3d world and 3js okay so we we created these lines of code oh that's why uh, Oh, look, look, look. I didn't see this. Maybe this was the reason I... Yeah, it was like the... It's the old syntax of Node, but... Uh, I don't need to import it. If we use the server, if we use Webpack and Express, sometimes you need to import the three, like import three from three. It's like in React if you are used, like you import a module. That's why I was talking about modules uh, before. So if you use a server, etc., we will use it maybe in another project. You, usually you import this three library here, the whole thing. It's like import asterisk as three from three, like import everything from three, but not in this case. We just have it here in the scripts. Okay, we are pointing to this path and we are just simply using it. Okay. So we want to add some objects, right? We want to see something. So like all our effort means something because now we don't need, we are, we are not seeing anything. But let me drink a little bit of some ginseng uh, also my cut up are made of you know art this is like paintings i have a collection uh, with different paintings so this one is uh, corrida de toros museo del prado okay i have like many of these with different paintings and pieces of art Anyways, so let's go for this object. For the objects, it's usually like in other 3D programming tools, usually you create a cube, you know, a basic one, the basic geometry. We love the cubes. We always start with a cube. If we use um, any other 3D software, you know that you always start with a cube or you always start by deleting the cube the poor default cube for example in blender those who used blender or work with blender they know that they open the program and the first thing they delete the the poor 
default cube. Okay, so we will create a, a cube just to see because later this cube will be a box for our gallery. But since we are here for the beginners, we need to explain a bit things step by step. So bear with me, please. And also, if you think that my English sucks at times, uh, I know it's not my native language. And, you know, I can speak well at times, you know, but when you are live and explaining something technical, it's, you know, you may have some problems. So please uh, understand this. I know it can be frustrating, maybe the accent or, you know, when someone doesn't speak very well their native language. But, okay, anyway, let's create this, this, this geometry. Uh, yeah, in the end, here, let geometry. You see, guys, that now I see this, I was wondering why I was not seeing any suggestion. It was weird for me. I added that line of code. I don't know why. I just It was the shortcuts. I should delete some shortcuts, actually. Sometimes they are a good thing. Sometimes they confuse you. Sometimes you don't even know that you created a line, but you created it by, by a shortcut. Or like GitHub Copilot, it, it, it is great many times. But sometimes, if you don't know what you are doing or, you know, just clicking, you can add some line of code and get confused. So, first of all, to create a 3D object, what we do? We create a geometry and we create a material. Then, we create a mesh and we add this geometry and the material inside this mesh. Seems confusing. Don't worry, it's not. It's a pretty basic concept that the moment that you write it yourself, you will just get it. If not the first time, just the second time. It's. I, I will assure you that you will get it and it will become a second nature to you. So, lab geometry, again, you know it now, without my help, new, three, and then uh, dot, what I added, something new, you see that I added this, I don't need this, uh, geometry, new, three, for the geometry, we need a class that is called box geometry. Box geometry and it accepts some parameters uh, for the three axes x, y, z. It's like uh, you give the size of it 111, simple one, a small box. Box geometry is the shape of the object. So we have the shape. We need the class Mesh Basic Material. And uh, the material is nothing else than the color. So inside to add the color we we put uh, the curly brackets, the an object. And inside this object, we add properties. In this case, the property is color. Uh, this is the color of, 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 of it. And in the end, we create uh, a mesh. Again, new. Uh, 
new three uh, mesh as the name suggests and inside this mesh we put two parameters geometry and material geometry and material this creates the object okay great so we have it uh, i think you know now what we should do right you know i'm sure you know we will add this mesh to a scene scene that add mesh this mesh has the material and the geometry so this mesh is basically the object uh, we can try and test it but i want to 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 maybe explain maybe explain some basic concepts here so to 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 reflect again what we did a visible visible object um, like a cube to create it we need to create uh, this type of object named mesh okay and mesh what is mesh it's uh, simply a combination of the geometry okay and uh, the material the geometry is the shape i've added the comments here and the material is mm, how it looks the color in this case but later we will add you know textures uh, there are some other things but it, it's how it looks the color in this in this case so you start with this geometry that is the box geometry class okay that has three parameters that corresponds to the size the size of the box the geometry okay uh, for the material for the material we use the class mesh basic material uh, it has one parameter and this parameter is an object okay containing all the options so the class mesh basic material with one uh, parameter that is an object with all the options inside we have the property color so then i think you might know that to specify a color in 3js or in, in javascript uh, we can add the hexadecimal uh, number. Uh, we can we can add the simple string, like uh, you know, we can add it like this or uh, as a string. Uh, to 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 add it as a string, we sorry, we add the sign. How is it called this sign? I totally forgot the English, you know, the ID sign. Anyway, okay, so there are these different ways to, to, or you can simply call it red, like this. Okay, for further information, you, you, you get it in the internet. So the final, uh, the final thing is the mesh. So to create the final mesh, we use the mesh class, this one, that we send inside as a parameters, the geometry and the material. Okay. And that's it. In the end, you add it to the scene. Let's see if we have any errors because yeah. Art gallery. Yeah, I, uh, oh, sorry, it's the... the the audio three has already been there. Yeah, of course, of course. That main JS has already been declared. Okay, again, this one that I. Sorry, guys, for this. Let's see. Okay. Three dot scene is not a constructor.
Uh, having errors is normal, you know it, right? Okay, that's in, yes. Looks okay. Okay, so this error is just a small bug, insignificant, because it's just a typo. Uh, it's not seen, but seen uppercase. Okay, so let's check. It's normal. I will not cut and edit these videos. I will leave these mistakes and errors, so yeah. You, maybe you, you can learn from, from these errors. So I will not edit, you know, and cut the, the parts of the video where I make mistakes. Oh, okay, we have another error. Uh, what's this one? Cannot read properties of undefined render. Why? Let's check. Undefined render, 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 render. Oh! why i have this three here it's not needed so it's just renderer dot render without three i don't know i have no idea why i wrote that but okay let's check okay finally no more errors uh it's good to know that we don't have errors, but uh, we want to see the object that we created, right? We created... Uh, where is it? We created here... Where is it? Okay. We created the cube. So we want to see that cube. So geometry and material added to a mesh as parameters to create this cube. So maybe here instead of mesh, instead of mesh, uh, let's call it uh, cube. It's yeah, it's let's call it cube. So this is the cube created with a mesh that accepts geometry and material, but we don't see it. We have just this uh, HTML element. We have no cube, but uh, actually the cube should be uh, behind this element because the canvas is behind this. So we are covering it, I think. So let's hide it. Let's hide the whole element inside the body. And we should see it now. Oops. If we don't see it, uh, let's check if any errors. No errors. No bugs. But we don't see the cube. Why? Okay, guys, I'm not uh, cutting and editing these parts uh, where I have some some bugs so yeah let's find it together where is this problem i think it sh it looks okay i'm correct so we have the geometry new three box geometry we give the size of the geometry okay this is correct we have the material we create a new mesh basic material inside an object with this property of color and this is also correct I don't see anything any typo but if we had a typo we would have an error here we don't have any error so this is like those cases that you have a problem but you don't have you know an error so it's like a hidden bug okay and uh, yeah we should debug 
and find it if we can. I don't know guys if you see something uh, wrong here. I don't see it. Cube. It's a new mesh with geometry and material. Okay, this is also correct. And we add the cube to our scene. We render it with scene and camera. This is correct, guys. This is correct. Let's see. Maybe the camera. We pulled it back, the camera. Uh, the problem that we, talk, we talked about. So let's check the position of the camera. Yeah. Yes, here we move the camera back of five units, so we should be able to see it. It's not this. Where is the problem? Render is okay. The camera, the camera, the position of the cube. Did we move the cube? The position? No, we didn't. Um, perspective field of view. Oh, 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> okay, that's why. Okay, that's why. You see here the perspective camera. I told you that we need the two main parameters, the field of view and the aspect ratio. So we have the field of view, we have the, the aspect ratio. And then I, I, I said that we can add the two other parameters for near and far. Okay, but this one here, I have no idea what it's doing there, this zero. So it's like, it's like the third parameter it's like this is the near, okay, and this is the far, so it's zero. So yeah, I think this should be, this is the bug. Okay, so we have one for, uh, zero point one, for the near and 1000 for, for far. So it was like a third parameter, I, I don't know. Let's check, let's check. Should be okay. Perspective field. Uh, the camera pull it back. Yes, let's check. Okay, <laughs> great. We see it. Our small cube. Our little cute cute cube. Okay, it was like somehow hidden. We okay, so we have this object, guys, and we created it. Uh, maybe we can make a small animation, okay, of it. We can make a small animation, and this is the yeah, this is the, the time to talk about the animations. What are the animations? Yeah, you know what are the animations, but what are the animations in 3JS and the cases that, that we, we do here? So let's do something and let's explain it uh, a bit. Okay, so we are here. For the animation, actually, we need to create uh, the render, this one here. Uh, we need to create a, a function like a loop and this loop will make possible to, to to show this animation so for each frame i will explain it now in detail so we need the we need a function first so let's call it uh, let render loop or something like that okay so I will explain it like in detail because this is a cool thing. It's a something you know. It's a nice to 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 learn and to and to 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 play with it maybe. So a function render loop function and then okay. Uh, first let's put this inside. To move this whole line, you can uh, press Alt and the arrow, the arrow up and down. Okay, Alt and arrow up and down. Just another shortcut. Uh, okay, we don't have the parentheses here. Okay, 
yeah, I'm making many mistakes today. Uh, so about the animations, what we want? I want to 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 rotate this 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 cube, and to rotate this cube, uh, I need to change the position of the cube, right? So this one here, and to change uh, the position, we will change. Uh, sorry, not the position in this case because we will change the rotation. Sorry. So the position we we moved uh, before uh, the camera, etc. But in this case, we need to to change the rotation. So cube dot rotation. Okay. Uh, rotation dot x in the x axis equal cube dot rotation dot x plus uh, let's give it like a very uh, very slow motion to rotate so it should be okay like 0 0.01 okay let's do the same for the y-axis okay I copy it here and let's change only the y y here and y here okay so this is what we need to rotate the cube in the in the x and in the y axis. But if we check now, we will see that nothing happened. Uh, let's see this error. No error, but okay. We need to call this. E we need to call this render loop. Let's call it only render. Okay, so rotation and render as the scene in the camera. Okay, now we are back, but again we don't see the, the rotation. We don't see any change. As you can see, it's, it's, it's the same. Why? Because we need something else. We need something else. And I want to explain uh, something uh, at this point. So, about the, the animations. The, the animations, when we use 3.js, uh, they work like uh, you have uh, the idea of the stop motion. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we move the object and then we do a render. And then again, we move the object, something more, and we do another render, etc. and so on. The more we move the objects in the scene between these renders, the faster they will appear to move. Okay? Yeah, it seems a little bit complicated like uh, explaining it but the idea is the screen we are looking uh, runs at a specific frequency okay so we call that uh, a frame rate and you have heard about the frame rate I'm sure the frame rate mostly on on the screen but uh, it depends on the screen and the computer itself has some limitations, okay? Most screens run at 60 frames per second, okay? Some screens can run much faster, you know, it depends on the computer. Some computers are faster, some are slower, and so on. And when the computer has uh, these difficulties processing uh, things, it will run, of course, more slowly. Uh, in our case, uh, for the animations, we want to execute uh, a function, this function here, the render function, that will move these objects and do the render on each frame, but regardless of the frame rate. So, 
regardless of the frame rate that one computer has it, uh, you know, that regardless of it, we want this function to, to, to do the render on each frame. In uh, JavaScript, uh, not only 3JS, but in JavaScript, uh, the way of doing this is by using uh, request animation frame. We can search for it together. Request animation frame. Okay. It's from the window object. Okay, this one from MDN. Window that request animation frame. Uh, the window request animation frame method tells the browser that you wish to perform an animation and request that the browser calls a specified function that we talked about to update an animation before the next repaint. The method checks a callback as an argument to be invoked before the repaint. Okay, let's leave for now the documents. You have it here. You can read it uh, more in depth, but let's do it because things uh, you can understand things only by doing it and by a practical example. So let's add this request animation frame that uh, we, 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 we saw. So request animation frame and we pass here as an argument the function itself, the render. Okay. Let's let's see now. Okay, you see? You see? We now have this animation. A small one. We can change the speed here, of course. But yes, we did it. We have this animation. Thanks to this request animation frame. Okay, and uh, this is, uh, it's simple. Uh, here we can refactor a little bit our code. Instead of this, we can, you know, just a shortcut, another shortcut. We, we like shortcuts. You just delete this and add a plus like this here plus and delete this one it's the same thing okay it's the same thing so it's like saying uh, plus equal it's like saying cube rotation dot x equal cube rotation dot x plus uh, the number so it's the same thing let's check okay yeah nothing uh, changed it's cleaner. So we also made the animation. What else we can do now? Uh, I think we can add the movement. So we can move this, this little guy here, our cube. We can move it, you know, add the controls, left, right, up and down. Okay, it would be cool to, to, to learn also this. Let's find a way, a place here, and uh, let's add this one. Uh, control, controls. Okay, and here we we also need to, to explain some some other things. But of course, for beginners, for those of you, you can just skip this part. Those who are advanced and just are interested in in seeing the final result, you know, the, the advanced things about to create the, the, the art gallery, but for the beginners, uh, stay with me. So to add the, the controls, uh, what, we, what we will do, we need to press a key, of course, uh, the arrows on our keyboard. When we press the left uh, arrow, we want to move. To, to the left. We press the right arrow, we want to move to the right. Or not only the arrows, but yeah, 
uh, in most cases, when we play a game, we move with A, D, and W. It's the same thing. Uh, for this, uh, we need an event listener. Those of you that know JavaScript, uh, of course, they know what an event listener is. Uh, for those that don't know, you, maybe you should check Google uh, event listeners and learn about it a little bit. But we will make things very simple here. And even if you don't know, you will understand it the moment that I will write it down. Okay. So, yeah, I think you will understand it just by looking at the code. And this is the, the thing that we need to, 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 to always do. Uh, write a code that it's uh, very readable. So let's add this event listener that when we press the keys, uh, it will listen to, to these keys and then we'll make, you know, an action. Uh, comment controls so in this case uh, event listener when the when we press the keys when we press the keys okay uh, we will create also this event listener with a function I will explain it in a bit so document that add event listener okay parenthesis it accepts as you can read here listener document event it will accept the kind of uh, event it is a key down okay it is a key down and a function as a second parameter and this function we will create it to make possible you know to register this key pressed etc let's call it on key down usually when we create this kind of function we we call it on and the name of you know the action or the function that we want to do so on key down always camel case uh, it has it has three parameters so yeah the key down the type key down listener uh, also the function and uh, options that is a boolean yeah let's leave it uh, false the options okay so we have this uh, Event listener, kidow. Let's create this function here on kidow. Function. Uh, when a key is pressed, execute this function. Okay. Function on Kida. Okay. A parenthesis, it accepts a parameter that is the event. If you want to, 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 to know more in depth about ev uh, event listeners, uh, go and check MDN or the other resources. So we have an event here as a parameter and this event uh, will make us possible to access, you know, the event uh, which we are triggering. In this case, our keys, when we press the keys. For this, let's create, a, because we need to, to, to get what keys are we pressing, how do we know? We want to know, uh, from the code that these keys have. Every key has a code in JavaScript. Okay, so let's create a variable first, uh, key code, let's call it key code. And this uh, variable key code will be event, this one that we are accessing, that which, what is this? This is 
to make possible to get the codes of each key. Let's search Google for these codes because I don't know, I don't remember. I cannot remember. So, key code tables. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I have clicked before. Uh, here we have all the key codes. So as you as you can see, enter is 13, uh, shift, uh, etc. Okay, we need this one, the errors. So 37, 38, 39, and 40. So we need this. We want to move the cube or the camera uh, left and right. So we need this one. These are the codes that uh, do the work for us. So we saved it in a variable, event.which. And here we need the NIF statement to, to make possible to, you know, to get this. The first one, the key code, which one? Uh, 30, 30, 30, 37 and 39. Okay, so 37, 39, the right and the left. The right is uh, 30, 39. Right. Arrow. Okay. Let's uh, make a, an if statement. If Key code, this one here. So if event that which, and this uh, gets the code of all the keys. Okay. So if key code equal thirty-seven what's thirty-seven was right or yeah, I was left. Okay. Or right, yeah, let's start from the right. If key code equal thirty nine, so if the key is the the right arrow, what we want to do? We want to 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 change the position of the cube, or we can do another thing. We can change the position of the camera. We move the camera because when we will have the, the player, the player, when we will enter the gallery inside, uh, we will not have a cube, but actually we will, uh, like we have a, a first person uh, player that will enter the gallery and it will move around, you know. So for that, we can use the camera. So as a camera, we can go like a PO view, so we can move around. So camera dot translate X. Okay. Uh, let's move it a bit like like uh, it should be positive for the right it should be positive yeah so 0 0.05 okay camera dot translate hmm. it works it works but as you can see, uh, I press the right key, but it goes it goes to the left. Uh, why? Because uh, it's not the cube that is moving. So it's uh, the positive number is the right if it was the cube. But since we are moving the camera, so we move the camera on the right, we will see the cube. On our left, all right. Yeah, it's logic. So that's why. So let's change it here. A negative number. So we move the camera in this case on the left, 
and by moving on the left the cube will go to the right or we will look like it moves but actually it's the camera moving not the cube let's let's try it again so press the arrow okay great so we press the right arrow key and it moves nice so the the same thing for the left uh, arrow it was 37 so another uh, another if so else if oh why a comment <laughs> Let's add comment for uh, left arrow key. Left arrow key, else if. Else if. In this case, else if key could equal 37. Again, camera. Uh, camera that ticks because we are always uh, on the x axis. Translate x, and this time will be a positive. So 0 0.05. Let's test it. Press the left. We go to the left, even though the negative is the left and positive is the right. But we are moving the camera, as we said. It is working until now. So. Good sign, we are having no more errors. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, up and down. So the Y, Y axis. Let's check for the, the up arrow. It's 38. And then the down is uh, 40. So 38 and uh, 40. Up, right? Yes, up. Up, arrow key. Another else if. If key code uh, is 30. Oh my god, I, I forgot in, in a second and I forgot. Uh, 38. Okay. Again, camera. Uh, translate not x but y in this case and the same movement by 0 0.05 okay and for the down key down arrow key now, else if, if key code equal uh, 40, if I'm not wrong. Yes, 40. Camera, that translate Y. Access this time is negative 0 0.05. Let's test it. So up. Okay. I press up and it goes down. So it's uh, it's the other way around. So here negative number and here positive. Okay. Press up. Okay, it goes up. Press down. Okay, it goes down. Great, it works. So for now, I think it's, it's it's the same thing we can do with the rotations, yeah, as we did. Uh, yeah, this is the idea. Uh, I promised you that uh, even if you don't know about uh, event listeners, you would understand in an intuitive way, right? I hope so. So pretty much is this. Uh, we have this function on KIDAO. We call this function in this event listener, okay? 
So we get access to this function, to this event, event.which. This event.which gets the, the code of these keys that we press. And we call this function every time there is some trigger. Every time we, we like we have a listener there, like it's like the name listener. We have a listener. What we want to listen? We want to listen every time uh, someone uh, presses a key in this case, because we are listening to a key down event. So we are staying there and looking who is pressing the keys. We will catch it. Okay? So you are pressing the keys. We are listening to you. And every time the, the event triggers, uh, we call this function on down. When we call this function, when we execute this function, what we do, if the key was 39, we move it to the right. If the key was 37, we move it. So every time we execute this function, this is uh, the idea. I hope and I think it's easy to understand, as I promised at the beginning. So as you see until now, Free.js, if you know a bit JavaScript, it's not that hard, let's say. It's very intuitive. Uh, the, the names of the classes, the names of the properties are, you know, are, they tell something what they do. So you can have an idea when you use those classes, functions, methods, and properties. Uh, I think uh, we can stop here uh, at the moment. So this is the code that we we wrote the last time. We don't have much here. We only have like a cube. Uh, okay, this one. We only have this cube. I hide it the HTML here because I wanted to, to show the cube last time. Okay, so this is the the interface with this Van Gogh painting, some description information about the gallery. And that's it for now. I will hide it since, okay, this is an HTML element. It's hiding the scene in 3D. Later, we will do it uh, dynamically. When we click, when we start, we want to show the, the gallery. Then when we pause or when we press a key, we want to return to, to the main menu, okay? Like play or pause. So let's hide it again. Go at our main file. So uh, I will start with the floor, the plane, okay? So we need the plane, the ground. And uh, we will apply some texture to it to make it look nice. And let's see, let's see, maybe then the walls, uh, the sailing, uh, let's see together. So let's find a place where we, where to start the new code. Okay, so here we have the controls keys. Let's let's start here above the controls. So oh wait, this. Okay. So let's start uh, with the floor. Create the floor. It will be a plane, the floor plane. It's my, 
a copilot co wants to suggest. Okay. Uh, the floor. So to create the floor, if you remember in the last video, we created the cube. And for the cube, we created first the, the geometry of the cube. We created a box geometry. Here it is. So geometry, new three box geometry. And uh, you have the comment here. Box geometry is the shape of the object. Then we created the material. And the material is the color of the object, the look. Okay. Then we create a mesh. We called it cube. So this mesh accepts two parameters, the geometry and the material. Like it creates this uh, new object, 3D object that has the geometry and material, like merged. Okay? So we will do the same thing with the plane, with just a small difference. So let, let uh, plane geometry. Okay, I think uh, you remember here what we we should write. So new, always new, or a new instance of the class that we are going to 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 take. So three. Uh, this time not box geometry, but we want the plane geometry. Intuitive, right? So, plane ge geometry, okay? And it accepts two parameters. We can go to Google and check if you want. So, three dot plane geometry. Okay, here's the documentation. A class for generating plane geometries. Yeah, what we need. Code example. Yeah, this is what we wanted to do. Create the geometry first, then create the material, then the plane that is a mesh that accepts geometry and material. Okay, easy peasy. Then add this plane to the scene, the same as we did with the cube that we have here in the scene. Okay. So yeah, we can copy this, but we want to do it ourselves. It's always a good practice to always write down manually, not copy pasting. Of course, copy pasting is helpful. Of course, we need it sometimes. We need to be quick. But when we are learning, who, who for those who are beginners, but even for those that has experience, they are always learning something new at a point. So when you are learn, learning something new, always write down the code. It, it creates this habit. It, uh, it, then after a while, it, 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 it becomes a second nature. Okay? When you write it by hand, by typing. Because when you make it a habit, like to copy-paste the code or, you know, use some kind of just a syntax helper. Uh, yeah, it's very easy to forget even the most basic things like, uh, oh, I need a map, how to write the map, or oh, I need a function, how to write the function, or oh, how to write the, the component in React or, you know, for everything. It's, it's normal, it's normal. I think it happens to everyone. So without much talking, let's create this habit of writing down. But yeah, the idea is this. I wanted just to check for the parameters. Uh, what parameters? Uh, I see there are two parameters here. I think it's wide and uh, width and height. But let's check. So width, uh, height, width segments, and height segments. So it accepts four parameters. These two should be optional. Uh, yes, they are optional. So the first two that are important, the width and the height. Okay, let's do this. Okay, let plane geometry, new three plane geometry, two parameters we, we set. So I don't know. One was the default one. Yeah, what's the default one? 
Uh, let's put it 15 for now. Who cares? Uh, let's leave the optional uh, parameters for the width segments and the height segments. Uh, so in case you forget, I will always uh, write down the comments. So box geometry is the shape of the object. Okay. So we have the geometry. I think you remember now so when you make this habit to repeat the, the things again and again and again, it will become hopefully a second nature. So we need the material now. So let uh, plain material uh, equal new, always new. Every time you create a new object, a new geometry material, uh, you know, you will have this keyword new, new instance of that class. It's a new object. Uh, don't care for now about the object-oriented programming, what's happening inside that, uh, you know, a parent and uh, the classes, you know, three, etc., etc., that we are instantiating. Don't care about that. Just think about a new. I want to create a new geometry. I want to create a new material. And that's it for now, at least. Uh, so new three uh, material, right? For material, uh, we see here it's mesh basic material. Okay, so this one. Yeah, I said we don't copy. So, okay, mesh basic. Uh, okay, suggesting yes, we accept the suggestions. So mesh basic material, it has uh, the parameter, an object, and inside this object, uh, we put some properties, key values, All right? So open parenthesis and this object. Inside this object, it will accept some properties. Uh, for the material, we said that it's the look of the object, so the color. This is the simple color. We will learn uh, now in this video about uh, other uh, look of the object. So not only of the color, the simple material, but also add in the texture. So, you know, customized um, look. So we will give some image that we have, uh, etc. For now, let's create this uh, plane that will be the floor of the gallery with a simple color just to, to see that object in our scene, just to render it. So for that, yeah, I think you, you had in mind that we need color. And let's give it a color like green. Okay. Uh, another parameter, it's here, it, yeah, it's optional, but it's side, and the side, it's double side, okay, double side, I will explain what it is. This is to render both sides of the plane, so, yeah, we created uh, the geometry and the plane material, right? So I want to ask you again, I mean ask you, you know, just stop the video and maybe try to, to, to do it yourself. What, what, what we need, we said before, when we create a new, new 3D object, we create the geometry and the material. Then in the end, stop the video if you want without checking and uh, try to remember if you create it that, you know, That habit. So we need the mesh, the mesh that we we pass the parameters of material and geometry. So for that, uh, let floor or floor plane, okay, equal new, always new. Three dot mesh parentheses and it accepts. 
the plane geometry and the plane material, right? Plane geometry, plane material. That's it, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would like to ask you again, do you know what we forgot here? What else do we need? Do we see? Uh, no, we don't see anything. We forgot to add this lower plane that contains the geometry and the material to the scene. For that, simply write in scene.add. Open parenthesis and put floor plane. Right? That's it. Let's check if we can see anything. Yes, we see it. You see? It looks like a background, really, not really of the floor of our gallery. <laughs> uh, it has nothing to do with the floor, but yeah, we will we will we will go there. We will go there. For now, it looks like the background. We added just a simple material, a green one. Okay. Uh, to give it a better look, I mentioned before that there are no not only simple materials, but we also have the textures. Okay, so for textures, we can add, let's say, something ourselves, an image, uh, textures that we, we have. Because textures are images that will cover the surface of our geometry. Okay, and uh, many, many types of these textures can have different effects on the appearance of our geometry. So it, it is not always a simple material, a simple color. We have like uh, different types of, of textures. We have uh, the color one or albedo. At some 3D softwares, you will see albedo. The albedo texture is the, the, the most simple one. It's, you know, it only checks uh, the pixels, you know, and apply to, to, to the geometry. Uh, then we have some other types like alpha. I think you also know alpha, apart from albedo. That is the grayscale image. And uh, you know, for the transparency, it, it it where white will be visible and black will not be visible. Then we have some more complex uh, textures. Uh, we have the height texture. The height texture uh, will move the vertices to 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 create some some relief. Uh, but yeah, I will not stop here at the height. We also have the normal, uh, that is also common use. Uh, the normal textures will add small details in the textures. You know, we to, it won't move the vertices, okay? But it will create uh, this feeling of of the light, thinking that this is is. The face is oriented differently, so they are very useful and they are used uh, often to add these details and yeah, give that look of performance uh, 3D object. Uh, yeah, we also have some other textures that I think you also know or heard or you saw somewhere that is the the met the metal the metalness texture you know is that gives that look of uh, metallic you know there is also the roughness that again uh, we use it to 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 make 
the part rough and it's like with white and black the white will will give the part that is rough and the black will make it uh, the part smooth yeah there is much to learn about checksters i invite you to go and check the documentation do your research it's interesting uh, but yeah we will not stop here maybe there is to mention the pbr that i want to mention pbr because pbr now is you know it's everywhere in the most advanced uh, 3d softwares because now pbr is becoming the standard for very realistic renders so unity engine which i love my favorite uh, tool ever unreal engine that is also great uh, blender and many others so they they are all using pbr now as a standard you know for realistic renders for now let's add a simple checksters that will be a checkster yeah that we find somewhere on google or you have it i don't know i already have i think the checkster i yes i have the checkster here is this one you know the texture about the the floor uh, yeah we want this in our gallery you have seen the video so you know this you have seen it let's try to add this one how to do it let's see where we left where we left okay create the floor plane we are here so we need to replace this color with a texture not a simple material like the color uh, maybe above or okay here for the texture uh, we need to use another class that is called texture loader this texture loader makes make it possible to 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 load an image that we we have like in this case our image that we have in this folder here okay so the class is checkster loader we can google about it we can google about it read a texture loader Let's check the documentation. Class for loading a checkster. This uses the image loader internally. Okay, okay. So the syntax is const checkster new three checkster loader dot load. Or we can create a variable here for this. Separate it. So texture loader let or const texture loader this uh, new three dot then texture loader dot load you know to have a cleaner code let's let's do it here uh, so we we will go we will go for for what I said for. of the floor okay so let checkster loader new three let's check again was it new three checkster loader okay Checks the loader. Was it lowercase? No, it was uppercase. I see this small arrows. 
Okay, now that we have this variable, checkster loader, we can access, uh, yeah, this dot load and add our image, right? It's just the same thing, but yeah, we keep it, let's say, cleaner with variables. So text and loader dot uh, load, right? And text and loader dot load, and we have textures and the path. Of, uh, of it. Uh, the path is IMG, then floor. Let's try IMG floor dot J. Should be okay, I think so. I don't see anything. Let's see the console log. Consider using plain buffer geometry for lower memory footprint. Okay, yeah, because now three have this buffer geometries. Maybe I, I will explain it later, or the difference. It's the same thing, but yeah, it was the old use was using, you know, without buffer. Now everything has buffer because, yeah, it, it's a better performance for memory, etc. With buffer, you cannot manipulate, you can, but it's. Uh, more difficult to manipulate vertices, etc. But yeah, I won't talk about it now. But uh, I have nothing, I don't see nothing. Okay, yeah, we don't have any error. I think we can add it to, we can, yeah, I can. The, that is not an error, it's just a warning about this plane, yeah, let's buffer, let's see if it is. Okay, it is not anymore there. Okay, guys, I was uh, talking about before about the geometry and buffer geometry. Okay, that I mentioned before that I changed here the plane from plane geometry to plane buffer geometry. They are the same thing, mm, not the same thing, but you know, we will do the work but they have some difference. Let's say the difference is that buffer geometry, not just geometry, is the newer one in the 3JS library. Okay, with there is some years that we, uh, 3JS had this update with buffer geometry. And I will explain the difference now, and I will explain why this bug that we couldn't see, I think I got it, why? But I will show you, you know, to have this process told to, to, to catch the errors, because yeah, this is our job to deal with, with bugs and errors. So what's the difference? Okay, let's see this one. I already checked this, so I think, so the guy here on Stack Overflow is, is asking, what is the difference between box buffer geometry versus box geometry in 3JS? The question that we also have. So the geometry classes are manipulation friendly, memory unfriendly, all JS geometry classes. Okay, they are memory unfriendly. We we learned that. Uh, this means that each piece of data that defines this geometry is stored as an instance of some classes, vector three, vector two, etc. These come with convenience methods, so you can dot vertex with some other vector, translate vertices, modify, etc. Something that I wanted to do, 
before this project and that's why now i have some problems i will explain better please don't uh, get confused i will explain everything but it has overhead in memory and performance creating all these instances and storing them okay so before 3js has these classes of geometry only geometry not the buffer geometry now now it's been a, a while i don't know how how many years but i don't know two or i don't know now everything is replaced replaced not really replaced you can still use this with older versions but now 3js has updated to buffer geometry and buffer geometry classes are performance friendly geometry classes that rely on typed arrays to store the data okay in a webgl friendly format so they will use a float 32 array okay it, the guy here explains the difference what this means that vertices instead of being an array of vector 3 they are typed arrays okay they are typed arrays and they are much more efficient yes sure they are much more efficient but much harder to manipulate something that i wanted to do with vertices i wanted to manipulate and i i had the new classes of buffer geometry i I had no information about this thing that with buffer geometry I couldn't manipulate vector three and vertices. So I was having some problems. I didn't have the information. You see the difference. Look at the difference here. So I will I was used with this method with the geometry without buffer to get vertex five and have access to its, you know this is what you do and this is what you do with buffer geometry you see now the difference okay this is a problem that i had with another project and uh, there was a discussion uh, by the guys uh, that created 3js i think it's here Yeah, the upcoming release has this potentially breaking change. The class geometry will be no longer part of the core, and yeah, it was deprecated in this geometry. But as I said, since I wanted to, to manipulate these vertices with another project, I uh, uploaded the older version without the buffer so only with geometry so the older three object you know this the older one that has also geometry not uh, only buffer geometry okay because i wanted to to do something else with vertices uh, yeah uh, why so much uh, explanation because here I think is the problem since I had this other version to use geometry instead I think this class uh, 3 checkster loader wasn't in, the, in, in this let me check something else image utils okay and I have this one. This now is deprecated with the new version. This tree that image utils was used before this checkster loader. So you see in the 3JS modules, the, the big object, in the source code of 3JS, there is this, this class of image utils. And now this is deprecated. Since I have it here, that's why the problem let me try just forget this guys uh, i think i found uh, the problem just forget about this don't get confused so instead of instead of uh, where was it 
checks that and checks that. Okay, here. Let me try something. I want to try something else. Three image utils. Okay. This is the class that I just showed you. No, it's not prime. This is this. Let me check again, please. One of the source code. Uh, you don't have to do this. You don't have to dig in the source code of FreeJS. Three image utils. Okay, three image utils. Should load. Check star. Now we have the 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 parentheses for the path of our image. So the path is img. Slash floor dot j p g. Okay, so new free image utils load texter. I want to try this floor texter map floor texter. I want to try this. Let's hope. Uh, yes, Eureka. Eureka, we found the bug. It was a hidden bug. Hidden bug, but yeah, this was the reason, guys, why I had all that talking before about buffer geometry and, uh, you know. Since I wanted to, to create something else, I wanted to, to, to manipulate the vertices, etc. You know, you, you, you saw here in the Stack Overflow the guy that was talking about that is much harder to manipulate it with this buffer geometry. You see, it is much more performant and memory friendly, but uh, it's harder for, you know, some other manipulation. And it's, it was easier with geometry. That's why I changed the, I changed this uh, source code of three. I got this because, yeah, I could, yeah. Sometimes with three, you can play yourself a bit. So now no more talking about this. We found this problem. You just forget if you are using the new version, uh, download it from, from GitHub. If you are using the newer version, you should have this one. So this class checkster loader so you you can use this code here so i'm leaving it here okay i will add a comment here uh, image utils is deprecated in the newer versions of 3js okay uh, i'm leaving it for now because yeah i want it this way I want it this way, so it's not a problem in the end. So I I, I will use this image utils, but usually you know you you can use with a newer version Chester loader is the same thing. So don't get confused. Again, we have uh, this floor that we created the geometry and material. In, uh, then create the mesh that checks the geometry and materials and create this floor plane but to not have a simple color green that we had before but to have a custom image texture we created this texture that for to create the texture you need to create a new instance of this class texture loader or in my case image utils Okay, guys, I hope it's not confusing. I will leave the code like this. The good news is that we can see, uh, we can see this 
our checks are even though it's blurred and you know oh, we cannot see it. but we see something that's uh, good news now let's try to 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 modify and correct things with this new checkster and with this new plane that has this checkster okay we have added it in uh, our scene no before here before scene uh, we want to move this uh, floor because you see it's very uh, blurred and it doesn't look good we want like you know in the vertical axis like you know just the ground and we 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 see it uh, that way okay let's try to to do that so we need to rotate a bit this this uh, this floor and to rotate there are some mathematics but uh, don't worry we will not do advanced math we will use uh, some internal methods that will do the, the calculation for us okay so no advanced math for that to 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 rotate the floor floor plane dot access rotation rotation dot x we want to move it in the x axis oh dot x uh, I want to try to move it like 90 degrees okay and how you do that how you can move 90 degrees you cannot like write 90 here you know? to do that we will use the the math dot pi internal method okay so math dot pi divided by 2 add the comment uh, this is 90 degrees rotation so if you want to to to, to rotate something 90 degrees uh, use this formula uh, formula math that pi divided by 2 okay uh, let's see if we have we don't see anything now but we don't have any errors right no no errors but we don't see it uh, let's uh, floor plane dot rotation dot y axis this time and uh, to rotate it in the y axis so not the the x but the y we will rotate it uh, 180 degrees okay so if you see that divided by 2 is 90 degrees uh, we can assume that for 180 degrees it's just math dot pi not divided by 2 right math that pi this is 180 degrees we don't see anything mm. Yeah, I love errors. I love when I have errors, you know. I forgot something here. 
four plane, four plane, four plane, where is four plane? Okay, four plane, that's correct. Okay, the problem was the rotation. I think I got the, the error. Where is the problem? I think so. So for floor plane rotation X, it was correct actually. Math.py, that's it. I made just a small mistake. That's why I'm not seeing the floor. So again, that why math that file okay so this was before and we didn't see anything okay the problem here was just a small detail for the y-axis not rotation but position eureka position let's check now Okay, we see it, finally, even though it's upside down, but we can correct it quickly. So, since it's upside down, let's put a minus sign. So, minus 180 degrees, okay? Okay, finally, and that's it. Eureka, I finished this part here. I had in mind to, to continue with the, the walls, but I think for this part I am finishing here. Okay, and that's it. We have our floor. You see, now we miss only the walls, the ceiling. And then we can modify the shape of this gallery, wide or, you know. Then we can think about uh, the paintings and give that very looking good that we have in the video, okay? That was the problem. We couldn't see it because it wasn't... Uh, I I finished this video now. I will try to upload the other parts. Upload. I mean, I will make the tutorial and upload. I will try to 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 do it as soon as possible, so you can finish this project. So thank you very much for being with me, and uh, let's see in the next video. Bye. And this time we will try to create the gallery walls uh, as we did the floor last time. Uh, okay, I have opened my Visual Studio. So, without wasting time, we can start by creating the walls. So, here is the code that finishes... Okay, floor plane. We created the floor here, so below. Below we can start the code about our... So let's add a comment, create the walls, right? For the walls, uh, since we we are going to create more than one wall, so we need the front wall of the gallery, we need the left wall, the right wall, and also the back wall. And in the end, we also need the ceiling. We have the floor, we also need the ceiling. So, since we need more than one wall, 
we can create a group of objects. Uh, 3JS has this class of group. When we want to create uh, a group of objects that we know that they will be in this group, you know, to manipulate them together or we just want to recognize them, you know, for like in this example, the walls, like front wall, left wall, right wall and back wall, they will be in this group. So let's start by creating a group of objects, okay? Uh, I notice here I I used let and const, so maybe we should be consistent and use yeah const for this thing, the things that that aren't going to change, like these variables, for example, yeah renderer. Camera scene, they are not going to change. Geometry also, it is not. Yeah, we can use const here, but just to be consistent. Const. Const. Okay. Yeah, sunlight and ambient light. Okay. So this is our current scene. What we what we have. You notice that we can move the scene, right? We are actually moving the camera because at the beginning when we didn't have the floor we had the impression that the cube was moving okay we press the right arrow and the left arrow the cube goes that way but now that we have the floor we can we don't have this impression anymore so we see that it's the scene moving, actually, it's the camera moving, okay? Later we will change this and we will move the player, uh, the, the person that is going to, to, is entering the gallery, okay? Let's go back to our code. We are here, create the walls, make some space. So let's create a group of walls. Const wall group. Equal three dot group. Parenthesis. Uh, leave a comment here. Create a group to hold the walls. Okay. Let's set immediately this group to the scene. So we don't forget later. So let's add this group to the scene. Scene dot add. You already know, I hope, this by now. To add things to, to the scene. After we create something, we add it later to the scene. So scene dot add wall group. And this is done. Now let's start by creating the single walls. So let's start with the front wall. We enter the gallery. We have the floor, we will have a front wall in the end. Okay. So comment. Front wall. And again, uh, what 
what we'll choose for, for the walls. We used, we used the plane for, for the floor, the plane geometry. You might think that we can also use the plane geometry for, for, for the walls, but we can use a simple box geometry that we already used many times by now. So box geometry and also a simple material to give a color to it, just to recognize in the scene the, the wall. Okay. We will create this box geometry, but you would think that the box geometry will be like you know, like a box within the wall. But yeah, but we will create the box with the width and with height, but you know, on the on the z-axis we will make it like thin, thin, very thin, okay? So it will be a wall. Am I explaining myself? So, const front wall equal new, always new, keyword to create something new three uh, we can create like we did the last times we create a variable for the geometry we create a variable for the material and then we create a variable for the 3d object that is a mesh geometry that has inside the variables of geometry and material or we can use it in a code block. So we can use a single code block to like this, just to, 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 to make things different so you, you get used to, to it, to this idea. You can use it like up above with creating a variable for the geometry, creating a variable for the material. And another variable for the mesh that contains geometry and material. Or directly create the mesh having inside the parameters. Okay? And with a main variable like this directly. Let's see it in action. So front wall new 3.mesh. Okay? Parenthesis. Now let's create the geometry and the material. New three dot box geometry, okay. Open parenthesis, and the parameters are the the three parameters for x, for y, and for z. The you know width, height, and depth, and you know. So uh, let's give it like uh, fifty. 20 and yeah we want this thin very thin so we just want to 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 have it you know the width and the height but thin not like a box so 0 0.01 or 001 let's let's see it okay uh, comma and now we will add the material you see they are in a single block of code not by creating three variables you can use it either one or how you prefer but i want to show you you know to get used to it new three that mesh basic material uh, parenthesis and this accepts an object with some properties that we can add so object inside this object we have the key value of color green red blue okay so the property of color and the value of uh, let's make uh, each wall a different color so we can separate and recognize because if you if we make like 
red, 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 you know, we don't see the the borders, you know. So let's make every each wall a different color. Let's start by green. Okay. And we created the mesh of the front wall. Do you remember what we need after we create the geometry and the material and the mesh containing this geometry and material? Uh, I think you you remember it. We always need to to add this to our scene. Okay, do not forget because if not, you will not see it in the scene. But also we need to to position somehow this wall because we want to see it, you know. But first, first uh, let's try to to add to the scene. So to add to the scene, we will not use scene that add in this case since okay, you see here we already uh, added this wall group to the scene okay so the group containing these childs okay these walls will be added to the scene since we added the group there okay so if we say for example wall group that add and we add here the front wall then we will have the left wall, right wall, etc. etc. So since we are adding this front wall to the group, wall group here, it will be automatically added to the scene. Since we added to the scene the wall group. I hope I am explaining myself. Uh, yeah, we can we can try and experiment live. Okay, let's see what's the error. 3D object dot add object not an instance of three objects 3D undefined. Okay, okay. Let's check. So wall group three dot group. Uh, first of all, we created this this group. Okay, and seeing that add wall group, we added uh, the wall group to the same. We are okay here. Then, then we want to add this front wall to the wall group. Okay, so wall group that add front wall, and is this one here. Okay. Uh, I forgot the keyword new. That's why it's not an instance of. Okay, forget it. So it should work now. Yes. Okay, so we have the front wall, but we have it, uh, you know. To, to close um, but we have it so we are there uh, very easy very easy now we can change the position you I hope you know by now to, to change the position and have clear this idea to, to change the the position in different axes on the x axis y axis and z axis so in this case the front wall it's in front of us okay so if we move the position in the x axis it will be still there to close but just moving left and right if we move it on the y axis we will move it up and down so what we need in this case with the front wall is just push it and you know 
give it some space. We want to push it forward. And that is the Z axis. Okay. So the depth, we want to push it forward. So let's change the position on the Z axis because I think the left and right, so the X and the Y, let's be it on the zero, you know, the, the, by default, we are not going to change it. We just need to change the Z axis. Let's try. So here, front wall, uh, that position, that Z, we said, and uh, give it a value of, so, as you know, for the x-axis, uh, positive number is right side, negative number is the left side, okay, zero is the center, so if we give a value of positive number, uh, the object will move, will translate the position to the right. If we give it a value of negative number, we will move it to, to the left. So the same with Y and the same with Z. In this case, if we give a positive number, we will have it to close. So in this case, let's try with a negative number. Okay. And the negative number of, uh, I don't know, 10, let's try it. Okay, 10 looks, looks great. Because maybe I think we gave the, of the floor, we gave the same value of 20 as the height or, you know, this, whatever. 20 is, is uh, looks looks okay. So we have this front wall of the gallery. Of course, we can change the values. For the width, it looks perfect. For the width, it looks okay. We will match it uh, with the width of the floor. We will check, but I think it's 50-50 because I remember that the floor was uh, 50 as the value. So also this wall here is 50 and it, it matches. Uh, for the Y, it looks okay. Maybe higher, I don't know, but it looks okay. For now, now yeah, higher will be too much. Maybe I don't know. We can always turn turn back later. Let's leave it like this. We added the front wall. Let's start with the other wall. The other wall, yeah, the left wall. Left wall. Again, like with this method above, create a mesh that has inside geometry and material. Or create uh, separate variables for the geometry, separate variable for the material, and then the variable of mesh containing this, as you prefer. I'm trying to do things differently so you get used to, to the, the idea. So const uh, variable left wall and this variable will have this instance of the class mesh from three. This is uppercase. Three is always uppercase. Three dot mesh parentheses accepting two parameters, the geometry. Don't forget the keyword new, as I had the problem before. When you instantiate a new instance, you 
you you you need the keyword new because you know from object oriented programming for example this mesh class uh in the you know in the back scene would have a constructor with some properties you know we get some properties from this class okay but they these properties of the constructor are dynamic so they have a key that we can give a dynamic value to it for example so the mesh has some properties defined there and we can just give new values every time we create a new instance of it so for example this uh, mesh class would I think would have a constructor normally it has a constructor with some properties defined there uh, we can give to these variables these properties uh, dynamic values every time we create a new instance so that's why I knew this and knew that okay we just create a new instance of this mesh class that was defined there with its properties okay but every time we create a different instance with different variables we get a new one a dynamic value for these properties okay without confusing anyone let's continue with new uh, yeah the geometry right yeah geometry new three uh, dot box geometry again parentheses uh, let's give this value again for front and from from left let's try it with the same values the same width and the height and the z axis so 50 20 and 0 0.001 comma don't forget comma here and the next parameter which is the material new three that uh, mesh basic material it's the simple material uh, parenthesis it accepts an object inside and inside this object we can put some key value like color red color green etc we had green the front wall let's give it uh, another color so red color red okay and now after creating this uh, i think you you know by now we need to add to the scene so left wall add to the scene and it should be okay okay we need to position it but let's see first yes we have this left wall but as you can see here and as you can imagine as with the front wall it is again in front of us with front wall we did nothing but just pushed it forward in the z axis okay but what we can do for the left wall because the left wall we need it like this you know like in a vertical axis so we need to rotate this this wall from here we need to rotate it like this okay so like this so we need to manipulate the rotation in this case uh, not the position we need to just manipulate the, the rotation of course the position also we, we we will give that value but most important here is the rotation so from here here is like nine so it's 180 degrees okay so no yeah from here here we need to move it no sorry it's 90 degrees actually yeah here it's 90 degrees because 180 degrees 
would be like the floor turning again. Okay, so it's half half the, 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 the sphere. So we we need just 90 degrees in this case. And 90 degrees, if you remember the, the last tutorial, for the 90 degrees we can uh, we can use math.pi divided by 2 formula okay when we want 180 degrees we use math.pi 90 degrees is math.pi divided by 2 so 180 divided by 2 let's try that Okay, here, left wall, left wall, that uh, rotation, rotation, okay, so rotation in the y-axis, right? So math dot pi pi is uh, uppercase uh, divided by two. This is ninety degrees. Let's see what happened. What's happening? We can't see it, okay? Because we 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 rotate it, but we cannot see it. It's not in the scene. We rotate it in the y-axis, it's not in the scene. Let's move it, let's move it, uh, let's move it in the x-axis. I think we cannot see it because, we, let's move it in the x-axis. Don't, don't, don't get discouraged, guys, we will get there. So let's move it in the x-axis, okay. Left wall, dot x, that position uh, or position that x equal uh, in this case x we said that positive number is the right and negative number is minus okay so negative is left positive is right so we have the left wall negative Negative, negative again, negative 20. Let's see what's happening. Oh, error. Okay. Cannot read properties of undefined. Reading position. When you see an error like this, usually it's like the property that has this position doesn't exist or there is some problem, there is some error with it. Okay, so we cannot read the properties of undefined so position is a property of this undefined what is this undefined this undefined is x of course because you see position of undefined undefined here is the x that i don't know why i wrote that it's left wall that position that x not left wall that x that position that x okay but yeah, you you should get used to understand the errors, what they mean, really. You get used to it when you get often bugs and errors, like me, I, I get a lot. As you can see, I make mistakes, but I hope that I also learn from them. But you should get used to the meaning of these errors. It's like those very important things in programming and for developers yeah, it has some meaning so it wasn't defined yeah we see the wall and it's perfectly fitted we okay that's great that's great you see we also have the left wall and this property here was perfectly I just want to try not math that uh, pi divided by 2 but 180 degrees and you see 
as I said, one half math that pi like make a rotation 180 degrees. Okay, so it will turn again from the other part. Okay, like back. In this case, we need just a 90 degrees from here. Here, 90 degrees. Okay, it's like this. I think you have this clear. But you can always play, you know, if you have problems in other projects. So divide it by two. And the position was the, the x. Because if we try this, not negative but positive, you will see it now at the right. The same thing that we will do with the next wall. So, okay, you see it's on the right side. But since we named this uh, left wall, we need it with negative number. Now we can easy peasy create the right wall because it's the same thing. Here we can just copy it, but we said that we don't copy, we manually type because we want to create this practice and habit. So it becomes with practice second nature to, to not forget how we write code, call things, functions, methods, etc. properties. Left wall, now comment right wall. And const again right wall equal new instance three main object mesh class parenthesis and mesh class has these options that we get from it ready made with its properties that we give a dynamic value every time we create one we 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 can give another value different value so the first one is the parameter for the geometry so box geometry uh, new or oh, new okay you see these small errors but they can create a bug three that box geometry all the geometries are are always uh, from the main object three Okay, so three is the main object. I will I will show you here. This is the source code of three. Uh, you see there are uh, how many lines? Okay, we have like more than thirty-five thousand lines. Okay, full of these classes, methods, etc. So var3, this is the main object. And then inside this object, we create classes with constructors, with some properties that we have defined there, that we can give new values every time we instantiate and create new instance of these classes. And these uh, classes may also have methods that aren't anything else that simple functions. So methods are functions declared inside an object. And we access them, we access them like uh, mesh dot that function. So it is called a method. And yeah, you know, three is the main object here that has inside all these classes like mesh that has these parameters that we can pass geometry uh, value again uh, 50 20 and uh, 0 0.001 comma don't forget and new uh, 3 again mesh basic material it has an object inside this object 
has some properties like color with value uh, yellow this time we want to differentiate those colors yellow good so this one is easy peasy because it's the same with the left wall so but we don't copy left wall dot rotation again the same thing oops rotation dot y is it y or yes y math dot pi formula to rotate we will always use this formula oh my god this word it's so difficult for me <laughs> we, we will always use this formula for rotation 90 degrees or 180 degrees 180 degrees is math.pi 90 degrees is math.pi divided by 2 we want this 90 degrees so math.pi divided by 2 and again I will leave a comment every time so it will stick in your mind this is 90 degrees I want to make it stick in your mind and position left wall dot position uh, dot x equal uh, not minus 20 but 20 positive number positive is right and what else here guys yes you know we add it to the scene and we don't do scene dot add we do wall group dot add because wall group is already on the scene we just need to add the wall group on the scene and the wall group will add everything that has inside as parameters passed here right wall and we don't have any more errors no okay we have again the wall but i changed the position why Rotation y math dot pi divided by two and position is twenty. Then y. What is happening in here? Okay, multiply by two twenty parameters are okay. Wave wall, right wall, warrior, you are on the front. What am I missing here, guys? I think you, you are quicker than me to find the errors, I'm sure. Uh, left wall, the position that takes. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> okay, I, you, 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 I'm, I'm completely sure that you, of course, you, you saw this, this, this stupid error from me, right? I wrote here, I changed again the position of the left wall, the same thing I did here, it's the right wall, right? that's why but yeah we learn from the errors let's check okay good we see it we have different colors you know we will in the end we will give white walls to this but if i make it white we we cannot see the difference because also the background is white and we cannot see we just see just a big white well okay looks looks good until now so what's left it's just the sailing right 
We just need the sailing now. Let's set the sailing. Right tool and the sailing. For the sailing. Uh, do we need to create for the sailing in the same group here that we have this guys here, the wall? No, because the sailing will be separated from this as it is separated the floor. The floor was a plane geometry, right? So it was not in this group of walls. So also for the sailing, we will create a separate 3D object, okay? And not a box geometry, but this time again, like with with the floor, we we will create a plane geometry. So uh, below this, okay, sailing. So. Again, the old method, we create a variable for the geometry, we create a variable from for the material, and then we create a variable for the mesh that contains this final object, okay? Or you can use again mesh inside. Let's keep things different so you get used to it. Uh, once you get used to the idea how it works behind the scene, you have it easier to, to develop things. So again, with the old method, with variables, so const uh, the geometry, sailing geometry equal new uh, three that uh, this time plane geometry and plane buffer as we said buffer has is memory friendly so as better performance uh, is better for the memory and you know it's the new new 3js new plane buffer geometry uh, we had 50 here for the width 50 for the width so the sailing will have also 50 for the width but yeah also 50 for the y axis let's do it 50 50 50 50 okay i will i will not get tired on writing comments I will repeat the same comment every time we create a geometry every time we create a material it will stick to you I'm always uh, referring to beginners guys so if you are someone who has experience uh, don't laugh at me that I repeat these things again or don't get bored because okay I know that maybe you are uh, good developer you don't need these things to to be repeated 100 times but uh, actually I'm referring to beginners because yeah this tutorial was let's say for beginners not only but yeah so bear with me some patience when I repeat things so box Geometry is the shape of the, the object. Now let's create the material. Sailing material. New three object, main object, and mesh basic material class. Uh, so material for uh, the sailing we use the red green and yellow red green yellow let's use blue for the sailing so 
Do you remember inside the mesh basic material we have an object and then we have these properties of color or blue? Double D double da. Okay. We created the sailing. What else? We didn't create the sailing because to create the sailing you create it with a mesh. So const sailing plane equal new three main object mesh class and uh, pass here sailing geometry and sailing material. Okay, now we created the sailing, but we cannot see it. Of course, we cannot see it because we should add it to the scene as we always do. So, scene that uh, what's the name? Sailing plane. Okay, now we should see it, but again, we need to position this sailing because, yeah, I think we will see it again in front of us. Yes, we see it again in front of us. So, yeah, it's another object that we see in front of us because we need to position it. So, for the other uh, geometries, we rotate it. 90 degrees like this or 90 degrees like this so 90 degrees and then position it to the y-axis minus 20 or positive 20. this time we need to rotate it up above so we need the sailing like like this rotate it like this so can you guess how how we can do it? Want to try it yourself, maybe? Okay. How we want to 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 rotate this on the y-axis? Uh, not in the y-axis because in the y-axis we did with the with the walls. So it should be in the x-axis. Let's try, let's try. I hope I'm not uh, wrong in the X axis. Okay, let's try, let's try. So, ceiling plan, uh, rotation, not that far. Ceiling plane, dot rotation, dot. Let want to try Y maybe first. I think it's X. But well, let's try how we see it with 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 y axis. Seven uh, plane rotation dot y math dot pi. Pi is always uppercase divided by two. Ninety degrees. It's blue. Hurts the eyes. Not that by oh. <laughs> I was seeing that it's like a, a bit rotated and I was wondering why. Uh, you see? But uh, yeah, I divided by two, not by ninety. We cannot see it because not uh, there inside the, the scene. Let's uh, move it a bit in the y, y axis so we see it. Sailing plane dot position 
dot x. Uh, let's try twenty. We cannot see anything. Fifty. We cannot see anything. Twenty. Ten. We cannot see anything. So we rotated it in the y axis. So let's try x axis. So ninety degrees in the x axis. Again, we cannot see anything. Fifteen. We cannot see anything. Sine rotation of x method by divided by two. Oh, we have x. X. You see, the rot the rotation will be y, not way around. So the rotation will be y and No, not y. Y was for the walls. The rotation should be x and the position should be y. Okay, we see it. We should move it uh, down. So in the y axis. So. 40, no, 13, no, 12, okay, fit, perfect, we also have the sailing, we completed this, looks nice, yeah, but one thing I want to do, I want to do something, because uh, later when we will we'll create the player and the player will go around the gallery, when we go near the wall, we want to have a collision. We cannot pass through the wall, okay? We cannot break on through to the other side. We want to have a collision and stop there because we are not ghosts. We cannot go uh, through 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 the walls. So for that we will add the collision, and to to add the collision, uh, there are some ways, and they are different from program to program from 3JS or Unity or Unreal, but the idea is to add the collider. The collider is, you know, like a bounding box that is the same as the object that we want to add that collider, okay? So when we go near that object, we collide with this box collider and so we will stop there by adding some other code, okay? But the idea is to add this collider. So later when we will create the player and the controls to move right and left, we want to, to stop when we go near the walls. So for the walls, here to create this bounding box first of all let's loop loop through through these walls because we want to add to each wall this bounding box okay so here let's uh, loop through each wall and create the bounding box Okay, so a for loop, uh, 
array that length it will be not array that length but it will be wall group wall group that children that length so the wall group that we have that has the children that are all the walls left right and the front so wall group that children that length that length okay so we are looping through through this walls and to add the bounding box we access this b box b box 3g that is okay so that's equal so wall group children i that is the element each element that b box equal new 3 that box 3 okay this creates this again we need wall group that children that i element we will use another method here we will use another method here that is called set from object and this set from object will pass this wall group dot children i let's search this Yeah, this set from object is to compute the bounding box of the children inside, including its children. So, so to create the bounding box, not of only one object, like with B box three, but when we have a group of objects, we want to create a bounding box for each of the children in this group of objects. For this, we use this method set from object. Okay, and that's it. And here it is. We also have this bounding box. For now, we leave it here because we will have to do with it later when we will collide the player with these walls. But yeah, this is for now. We can finish this tutorial and see in the next one when we will add the paintings and yeah, we will modify our scene, make it look better. Okay, see you in the next video and thank you for being with me. Uh, the main changes uh, before we... we, we we begin where we left uh, is that I updated 3JS uh, with the latest release. Okay, so now we have the latest release of 3JS, which is a good thing. We always want to have the newest updates from 3JS. Also, I added a build tool which is uh, Vite or Vit, I don't know how it's spelled, 
but it's lighting fast, you know, if you know Vite. Uh, Vite is a build tool and it's uh, lighting fast to build uh, the server to run our project. So we don't have to, you know, go live here with the option or have the free file downloaded and uh, have it here on our local as we, we, we had it before. Uh, we will download three from NPM as a package. I'll show you. So search on Google, uh, 3JS installation. Click on it. As you can see, uh, here it says that we need the project structure. And first of all, we need an HTML file, which we, we already have. Uh, a main.js file, which again, we, we have. Uh, then we can import uh, import uh, star as three from three. So import everything as three from the three package. Uh, we also may create a public folder, which is also sometimes called uh, static. Uh, here we have like all the files, like the media files, uh, the 3D models, uh, assets, uh, and everything. Uh, then you need to, to, to run these commands. So install 3 with npm. So npm install dash dash save 3. It's to save this uh, in the package JSON dependencies. Uh, and also for vit or vit, npm install uh, vit. Run these commands. Okay, I already have it. Uh, that's why I'm not running it now, but you can find it on documentation and run this. After installing npm install 3 and vite, you will see you will have the, a package JSON, okay? And in this package JSON, uh, you will have this section here, dependencies and dev dependencies where you will see the version of 3, which is the latest one, okay? And also for Vite. If you have any problem, you can simply go uh, on my GitHub, check the link in the description, uh, copy this file, package JSON, or download the whole project. But if you want to follow along, just uh, copy this package JSON, Edit it here in the root, at the root level, okay? And then you can simply run npm i, npm install, and it will install the dependencies that I have here in the package JSON, if you have any problem. Now, we will start the features that we want to add this time. Uh, if you remember, we left it the last time we created uh, the floor, the four walls, the ceiling, and then we said that we want to create the paintings on the wall and also the camera movement, like a user enters the gallery and moves around in an immersive uh, experience way with camera movement. We will do that. And also have the menu, like we click the start, the play button, you know, and then we can pause. We'll see, we'll see together. First of all, uh, what, what we would need? First, we need to import for the movement. Let's go to main.js. Oh, also, I forgot. I also, I, I changed the structure of the folder. Now you see the node modules, of course, because we installed uh, three and byte. 
So you will see not modules. Uh, I added this structure uh, folder SRC. Inside SRC, you will see the folder public, which we mentioned is for the assets, media, uh, models, etc. The HTML file, of course, the main.js for our script, and yeah, the CSS. So, and that's it. You can, yeah, take a look here and uh, follow as well this folder structure to be, you know, to have the same, the same project, or you can download from, from GitHub. Okay. Uh, as we saw in the documentation, the first thing first, after importing, uh, after installing 3 and uh, we need to add this, yeah, import star as 3 from 3. So here we don't need any more this console log. Okay, we import everything as three, from three, and we will access it here. Okay, so now this variable here, three, will be accessed everywhere here, okay? Then uh, we need to import the, the controls. For the controls, we don't import them from the main three class, the main three object, actually, but from another import. And I will show you. We are talking about, about pointer lock controls, okay? It's what we need. Pointer lock controls from three std lib library <coughs> you need to you need to download this okay to install i have it here on my package json installed you need to run npm i std lib here okay run the command and uh, install it or as I said, copy the package JSON that I have on my GitHub and simply run npm i. It will install all the dependencies. After having this and importing it here, we will use it later uh, for the controls. Something else I I I, I changed is I. I want to replace the deprecated image utils with Chexter loader. I left a comment uh, in my code there. Uh, let's see. Uh, image utils. Okay, it's here. You see, for the texture of the floor. I left a comment here. Image utils is deprecated in the newer versions of 3GS. Now we have the newer version of 3GS. We have the newest one. Okay? So we will delete this image utils, which is deprecated, and we'll replace it with another class of three, which is Chexter Loader. I will show you. So here, delete this part, okay? And instead, okay, GitHub. And instead, create a variable, checkster loader. Checkster loader. Equal, new, as you remember, we always create a new instance of that class so new three uh, texture loader okay 
it's a map. So now create another, another variable, const floor texture. And assign it to texture loader dot load, okay. And here pass the path or the the URL of the image for the floor. For the floor, we we add an image here in public image floor dot jpeg. Okay, so here with Vite we use uh, this way. We don't uh, type. Oh, sorry. We don't type here public, etc. But we simply add. Come on. Simply add EMG slash floor dot jpeg okay of course it's a string like this not the absolute path like src public etc etc simply add img floor plane jpeg etc okay and that's it. Now we have, with the newest version of 3, we are using the texter loader and not any more image utils. And this is fixed. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, we want to, to, to add the paintings. Okay. So let's create the, the paintings. For the paintings, We will create a, a painting mesh with a given image URL. Okay, so a mesh with an image URL. And also its dimensions and also its position. Okay, so let's create this function that will accept these parameters. Uh, let's create it somewhere, yeah, maybe here, after the, the sailing and before the function for the movement, okay? So, function uh, create painting, create painting, okay? And as I mentioned, it will accept uh, some arguments that we will pass, which are image URL, okay, uh, width, also height, uh, position which are things that we need for our image, okay? Open curly brackets and here we will create the logic for creating these paintings, okay? So inside this function, we load the image texture and create a painting mesh. So the complete function will look like this, with this logic. First of all, we need uh, a texture loader again. So for that, as we did with the, the floor uh, a few moments ago, uh, create a variable, const texture loader, Okay. Uh, as always, new three 
that text the loader okay then we will create a variable for the painting texture so const painting texture okay that will be with using the load method from texture loader okay this is uh, warning me that okay it's uppercase so painting texture will be texture loader that load okay and as a parameter here we will pass the image url which one this one here that will be passed dynamically every time we will use this function you will see so here pass image url and this is done now we create the material const painting material equal new three mesh basic material i think you remember the mesh basic material that we we, we covered in the other videos basically we have an object inside and we use map okay and we pass the painting texture if you remember you should be familiar by now with this and also we create the geometry for these uh, paintings so const painting geometry okay and the geometry is made using a class from three in this case it will be what kind of geometry it will be a plane geometry because yeah it's a plane so uh, new three dot plane geometry okay this plane geometry we will pass two parameters width and height of course so width and height so yeah we will create the mesh now we have uh, the texture we have the material uh, we created the geometry and now we will create yeah the painting because the painting will be as if you remember from the previous videos you know that the mesh is made with the geometry and the material okay so in this case const painting equal new three dot mesh it's a mesh what we want and we pass as we said the geometry and also the material the geometry is, is the variable here painting geometry painting geometry and the material is this one painting material okay and this is done yeah we we have this function we need to return this function of course because we will use this function so it it should return what it should return this painting okay so return painting and this is done and maybe maybe um, yeah of course we also we said yeah we we want to use also the position when we create uh, 
the painting every time we will use this function to create a new painting we will also use the position we will pass a position for it okay so here before returning uh, painting that position and in this case the position will be uh, first we will use set to set the position and the position will be this value that we will pass position uh, that x position that y position that z position that x position that y position that z okay and that's it uh, for for this function create painting we created this function so what else with this function let's add the paintings to our scene to call every time this function we want to to create one okay so we will create for example two paintings now with different images and different positions so to do that we create a variable for let's say painting one const painting one okay and we will call this function that we just created create painting and here we will pass first the path or the URL of the image uh, I already have here a folder artworks with all the works by Van Gogh so let's use some of them it's uh, simply artworks without src public etc artworks okay and then uh, yeah zero dot jpeg zero dot jpeg okay the first uh, parameter uh, the second one width and uh, height and also the position I will give um, 10 5 here okay let's see and for the position we will create uh, a new vector 3 class for the position so we will uh, create a new instance of vector3 so new uh, 3 that vector3 okay and we'll pass uh, the values for as you see here x y and z okay I don't know let's give some random one in this case uh, but yeah for the x let's say just 10 minus 10 for the left for the y a positive uh, 5 and uh, for the z uh, let's give it negative 20 negative 20 okay painting one also let's create another painting we will put it at the front wall so const painting two call the function and create painting again every time we will create a painting we will call this function Okay, it's it's very useful as you will see. So 
create painting and again pass the arguments in this case the first one is the url uh, yeah artworks artworks then one that jpeg okay so also here the slash thing Uh, the same thing, but this time not negative, but 10. Okay, 5, and also minus 20. Should be okay. And again, for the position new 3 dot vector 3, and pass here uh, the values for the position. In this case, again, not minus, but positive number. It will be uh, left and right. So 10, 5, and minus 20. It should be OK. Now that we created these two painting, if you remember, Every time we create an object, a 3D object, uh, we need to add it to the scene because if not, we will not be able to, to, to see it. Okay? So, I think you remember this scene that add to add the things to, to the scene and pass painting one and painting two. Uh, we sh should be able to see something, I think. Okay, we might have some errors. Cannot assign to read the only property position of object. 24. Let's see. We don't need actually this line, so we can remove it. Let's see. Yeah. Now we see something, we have another error, but yeah, we can fix that. We can see, yeah. We can see the scene. We don't see the paintings. Okay, we have a problem. Use them. And we had another error. Uh, okay, let's fix this one. First of all, let's fix this. Plane buffer geometry has been renamed to plane geometry. Three module. Okay. Plane buffer geometry. Let's fix that first. Okay. It's been renamed to plane geometry, right? Plane geometry, yes. Because now we are using the latest three JS. So remove the buffer one. Okay. Plane geometry. Okay, this is fixed. Uh, not found. So yeah. Maybe the title is wrong. Floor plane. Yeah, it's wrong. It's floor. Okay, now we see the floor. Okay, but we don't see the paintings yet. Let's check. Oh yeah, maybe it's... Let's try. 18. Yes. So let's use 90, because I remember 20 was the, okay, let's see, 90, 99, yeah, 20 is the limit, okay. Also here, Can we see the other one? We don't see the other one. Why? 
are close to it's okay with hide all this one what is this it's not the, this parameter yep redirect the page should be okay yes okay as you can see guys you see the paintings on the wall it works and we can use that function every time we want to create another painting we use the same method so painting 3 painting 4 painting 5 you know you can call every time this create painting function and create as many paintings as you wish we can of course create like a function like to create like 50 paintings uh, at once without like calling and creating manually you know painting one two three four of course we can do also that but we still don't know how many paintings we want to have for now for the sake of this tutorial we i will leave it here just these two paintings okay it's the same logic so maybe you have it as a small challenge yourself to populate uh, all the scene with with other paintings okay so it's up to you in the end if always if you have any problem of course i will i will do it we don't have any errors right no we don't have any errors we are good to go so we want to create now uh, the movement because we don't really want this movement you see i press the right arrow and i go left i press the left arrow and i go right this is because initially we were moving the camera and had the feeling when everything was empty the scene we had the feeling that the cube was moving right and it made this idea we were moving right too but no now that we have other objects of reference we see that i press the right the cube is moving to the right but we are actually moving to the left so we will change that also i will have to add the keys w s a and d to move not only the arrows but you will see that i will at this pointer lock controls basically you move the mouse and you move around in the direction of of, of the mouse uh, why we need that we need that because it will be smoother movement because i move the mouse i like look around and then i can move with the arrows or w s d a I can move the mouse and then move forward or in any direction. It will be smoother and a better experience. You will see. So let's go back here. So we imported at the top the pointer lock controls. Okay. You installed this. Now uh, let's use this uh, pointer lock controls. Okay. We create, we will create an instance of pointer lock controls and connect it to our camera and the document body, or maybe let me think a second. Because that's how pointer lock controls works, we need to click at something and it will activate the lock. So we click and then let's say the controls start, okay? Then we press ask in the keyboard 
and the control locks unlock, meaning they are deactivated. We cannot move anymore. What we want is click the play button, uh, enter the gallery, then we can move. So we want to add an event listener to the play button to lock, to start the controls, okay? And then uh, an event listener, when we press ask, they will be deactivated. Okay, and in this logic, we want to hide the menu after clicking the play button. We want to start the controls, but also hide the menu because we will enter the gallery. But as soon as we press the ask key, we will deactivate the controls and display again the menu. So we will have the chance to play a, a button again, you know? So like play or not play. Let's see, let's see. Uh, for this. So let me find a, a way where we can add this. Mm -hmm. Maybe here, yeah, here before before the the function on key down okay we can add that so uh, controls okay create the variable controls and always new the new keyword to create a new instance of pointer controls pointer lock controls and pointer lock controls we will attach the camera to it okay so camera and also the document body document body okay so we will click and we will uh, activate this so we need to create a function for that Okay. to start the the game the game it's not the game but to start our journey our tour okay let's call it experience so let's create a function uh, let's call it start experience okay lock uh, lock the pointer i will explain Lock the pointer, uh, meaning uh, the controls are activated. Okay. And hide the menu when the experience starts. To start the experience, we'll create a function called start experience uh, that locks the pointer and hides the menu locks the pointer meaning uh, activate the controls okay and we'll also add an event listener to the play button to start this experience so function start experience okay And here we will add our logic. Then, as we said, we use this function start experience that inside will hide the menu, hide the menu, and here lock the pointer, okay? And we said that we'll also add an event listener to the play button to start this experience. Okay, because this is the function, but we want to add it to, 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 to the button. And the button is, uh, okay, the ID play play button. 
Is this one? Yeah, is this one? Okay, so create a variable for this play button, play button, and it is the command. Uh, this is pure JavaScript. Okay. Uh, get element by ID. Get element by ID. Okay. It was play button. Play button, I think underscore, yeah? Uh, play button underscore, okay. Okay, so we have this play button bar, uh, variable. And now let's uh, use it, play button dot add event listener. We add an event listener to it, okay? So when we click, we will, we will use this function, start experience. We click this button, we uh, fire this function, okay? For this, it's always JavaScript, it's not for JS. Click the name of the event, okay? It's, the name speaks for itself. And the second uh, argument is the function that we will fire, start experience. Okay, so on click, fire this function. That we will finish here the logic. So we said we want to lock uh, the pointer inside the start experience function. We will add uh, the lock pointer and hide the menu as we have uh, the comments here. For that, for the lock of the pointer, we simply uh, add here controls that lock. Yeah, simple as that. Simple as that. And for hide the menu, yeah, let's create a new function, make the code cleaner. So, uh, create a new function, let's call it hide, hide menu, because we will then later also show it. Yeah, we will create two functions, hide menu and show menu. So, hide menu. Okay. Create it here, this function, hide menu. To hide the menu, uh, it's always JavaScript. And to show the menu, the same thing, hide menu, function, hide menu, okay. We will grab the menu, because what, what we will hide, what menu, this one, uh, okay, this one with ID menu, it's the whole element. So const menu, again, we will refer to, to, to this a document in JavaScript that get element by ID. And it was simply menu, right? Menu. Oh, yeah. Now that we have this uh, uh, variable menu, we can hide it. Menu dot style. Uh, menu dot style dot dot display. And uh, as we said, none. We hide it. Simple as that. Okay. So this function is used here in our start experience. We also want to show it later. So show menu. It's, it's pretty much the same thing. Show menu. Okay, we can just copy this. Okay. The only difference is not none but block. Okay. So we have these two two functions. Uh, we are not using the show menu yet because 
what's happening here document okay a typo document where are you where are you document okay here another okay uh, cannot read properties of null oh yes of course it's null <laughs> okay oh because i commented out this i commented this this of course it's null because this play button doesn't exist here it's null yeah simple as that yeah uh, you see, I click this button, nothing happens, but I activated the controls. I press ask, it stops. I click, but okay, it's working like it's triggering the controls when I click. Click, click, ask, it stops. But the menu. Is not hiding. Let's check. Okay, okay, guys. I I saw the error. As always, I sometimes make stupid mi mistakes. So bear with me. Yeah, it happens very often. Uh, I don't know why. I just forgot the syntax. Uh, the basic syntax of this we just assign to it now okay and also sorry here is block and here is none but we assign to none we don't pass it as a parameter okay okay just a stupid error it should work now We click hides. Okay, great. Press ask, it will show again and stop. We click, controls are activated and the menu is hidden. Press ask, okay. Controls are deactivated and the menu is back. Okay, it's done. All right, everything correctly. Okay, I have up and down, but I don't have the forward and backward movement. Uh, I will add it. We'll add that now. And we are done, I think, with that feature. Let's add it. Here we have the key codes. And we just need to, to add the forward, the backward uh, movement. Uh, yeah, also add for uh, W and uh, D, A and S keywords, okay? So here uh, we will modify this, the right, uh, the right arrow key. 39 is for the right arrow key. Uh, I also know that here we can add for uh, the right is D, right? Yeah, it's D. Here we can do, or if key code equal 39, which in the table we showed uh, the last, the last time we showed the table that every key has this key code, okay? And for the keyword D is 68. So if key code equal 39 or key code uh, e uh, equal 68, okay? Uh, in this case, we will not use translate X or translate Y, we will use uh, also, we will not use the camera movement here, but we will use for smoother, you will see, we will use the controls movement, okay? So here, uh, instead of camera that translate uh, X, etc., 
remove it and add controls that move right, simple as that, and pass uh, 0. Point at more speed, uh, let's try 8. 0 0.08. Let's try the length. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you see it's better. Okay. Uh, we'll do the same thing for, for the others, okay? So, also here that we have camera done translate x. Uh, controls that move right, okay, but we'll also add here uh, This is left so if key code equal thir 37 or key code oh, Sorry or Key code Equal 60 60 uh, 65 is for for the the button A controls uh, move uh, move right yeah but we can add the negative here okay or move left let's try it should work also I think. Uh, this doesn't work. Yeah, this doesn't work. Works okay. Uh, move. move right, but add negative here. Right works, left works. Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. So, use controls that move right, but use the negative for negative for left and positive for right. Okay. So up here and down. So I don't want this Y camera. I want uh, controls forward and controls backward. Okay. For that. Uh, we will use again the controls, but first, if key code equal thir thirty-eight, and also uh, uh, if key code uh, equal uh, eighty-eighty-seven, yeah, eighty-seven is for 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 the W. Uh, controls that move forward and here again 0 0.08 okay the same the the same speed you can change the speed uh, as you wish also here also here as with move right that we changed the negative for moving left the same thing to move backward use move forward but just add negative uh, negative value here okay so negative it will move backward but for the down uh, which is the the s key if key code is equal uh, 40 or is key code is equal 83 which is uh, the S key move backward okay because we have the negative here let's test 
it should be correct yeah it should be correct click activate controls we move around and let's try to move forward okay forward works like a charm backward works like a charm left and right okay it works so for example i want to go this way you see that it's smoother nicer because i can move the mouse and yeah just by you know it's better like this okay guys that's it we we did it i will leave like this small uh, challenge let's say for the beginners of course to adjust yourself the scene to add more paintings on the left and the right uh, walls uh, the movements are are okay you don't really have to do anything about it you can change you know the colors because we have this strange colors for an art gallery but if you remember i had these colors just to differentiate you know and see the, the walls and the ceiling uh, in the next tutorial i will try to optimize this of course make it realistic uh, i will try to play with the lights i will try to to optimize the texture uh, we want to see the walls as real walls uh, yeah optimize it make it look uh, much better maybe okay if you did it yourself at the time uh, for the paintings i mean if you are doing it yourself, uh, it's great. Uh, if not, I will do it. So you can check if you had any issues with positioning the paintings on the wall. But maybe we can add, like, I don't know, a better way to display. Okay. So see you in the next tutorial. Thank you for following me. Bye. In the last tutorial, we built the foundation of uh, 3D art gallery, setting up the walls, the ceiling, the floors, adding like a simple cube. We also implemented a basic movement controls, uh, etc. Since then, uh, our gallery has had a major upgrade, and this time, uh, I've added real artwork, implemented textures to make our gallery look even more realistic. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you can find better textures, very high definition out there. So, yeah, feel free to find uh, even better textures. And yeah, we even added a dynamic lighting system to set the mood a bit. Uh, I will show you, uh, but yeah, I improved some other things like movement. I got feedback from someone commenting on my channel. Uh, so now we have a better movement controls. It is smoother now. I fixed those things. But I've also worked on user interaction. And now when you approach a painting, an info card will appear displaying details about the artwork. Okay, I will show you. So, you see the textures on the walls. Now the walls and the gallery looks better. As I said, we can find better textures, of course, but I didn't want to use like very high definition textures because, yeah, the performance... Uh, will be, you know, you see also the angles, the borders, 
uh, it's they are better defined now because the shadows are showing better and the lights so you have now it really looks like a gallery you know like a room but i want to show you the the new feature that uh, we have now okay you see we have an info card it will show yeah the title the description etc when you get close to to the artwork you go away it will disappear you get close it will show if you change to another one it will show information about the other one and it's a nice thing this is a feature that many many people requested me even writing me on private so uh, not only on this uh, tutorial but also uh, in the other tutorials uh, this i i saw that this was a, a feature that was nice to have from many of you so yeah i added it and we will go through it how to implement it step by step and i also am commenting every single line in the code on github so for those of you that are you know are not beginners uh, please bear with me i know it's not the best thing to have like comments on every line but for the sake of our tutorial, for the people that uh, really want to learn the basics and they really want to understand every step, not only like, look at me, I'm doing this, look at me, I'm doing this, or oh, now we have this, and you just code there, you know, there are many tutorials when the guys just code and you follow and copy paste and yeah, you get the project, but in the end, you are not really sure if you really understood the things and the next time that you want something you will always rely on that youtube tutorial so the secret actually is that uh, those who make tutorials they want this they don't really want you to you know to learn how to do things yourself or uh, they don't really want you to to create things yourself to 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 teach you how to do it why you are doing this okay so uh, like uh, you create a variable why you are creating this variable how did you know that you need this variable how did you know that you need this function why this function what does it mean you know how can I know that, oh, I would need this function? How to, 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 to make the, 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 you know, the problem solving? How to debug things? How to solve problems? So these actually are the most important things to, to learn for everyone, not only for the beginners. But yeah, we know that uh, many tutorials, they just, you know, teach you how to rely always on those tutorials. So you will always come back to, to their channel, to their tutorials, and yeah, copy, paste, and follow the video. They are like spoon feeding tutorials, okay? This is why I will explain every step. I will comment every line of code on GitHub so those who are experts please bear with me just ignore the comments you know but i think for other people uh, the comments will be very very helpful even if you understand it now maybe you will get stuck and you will forget okay and you can turn back at the code and see okay this is about this this has this function this means that etc 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 okay i hope it will be helpful if not please tell me or if you have any ideas if you have any suggestion what you'd like to have you know what you'd like to explain more or what you'd like to just stop it emil and just stop with this blah 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 and just go and code okay
Uh, I also changed a bit the menu. You have, you, know, you see, there are some slow animations. Um, yeah, the fonts and everything. Yeah, the pencil, the, the mouse now, the pointer is this pencil. And there is this transition when you go back, this slow animation. You see, it's nicer. Of course, we can do even better with the styles. And I'm sure many of you are more knowledgeable in CSS than me. You are better than me in styling, I'm sure. Many of you, I'm sure they are. So if you can do better, yeah, please do it. If you want also to share, just fork uh, the GitHub repository. And yeah, send the pull request if you have something very nice or cool that you think would be nice to share with other people if the design is better than mine. And yeah, I know that there, there are guys that are doing better with the design than I did. Uh, okay, what else? Uh, I, I, in the future, I have some ideas with this tutorial. Yeah, I would like to, 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 to continue this, this project. We can do, I think, very cool things with this project. It can really expand. So I think we would love to explore more advanced features, okay? We can move on with more advanced stuff, I think. For example, imagine an audio guide providing you details about each artwork as you approach them, okay? Artwork or your designs or your links to project, you know, you want to showcase your project or your own portfolio. It will be your personal portfolio to show to recruiters in very nice way. It would be like very nice if you have a personal portfolio like that. And I'm sure recruiters would love it to see it. And yeah, why not? If someone uh, is looking for a new job, it will help. But yeah, imagine that uh, we had this audio guide. You move uh, through the gallery you approach these projects and artworks and an audio will start playing explaining you know the project or the artwork in this case explaining van gogh's art i think it would be very nice or you can add for example your voice your audio recording explaining your project this is my project, I worked with this company, I did this and I did that. And that's it. Now let's start with our tutorial and let's create these new features. Oh, I forgot the most important things. And yes, that is the most important thing. I refactored the whole code. So we had the previous uh, project. We had like one file, man.js file. Now I restructured and refactored the whole code. It is cleaner, better, it is modular, it has the best practices, and yeah, we have a file for every functionality. Lights, walls, um, the colliding system. Oh, I didn't show you. Uh, we will also add the colliding system. You see, now we cannot go through the walls. You see, there are some physics like. I wanted to use a physics engine, but I thought it would be too much only for the colliding system. So I used a very simple trick to do this colliding, okay? Because there were some options. Do it with a physics engine like AmoJS or CanonJS. Do it with ray casting also. But I found an even easier solution. So why do something complex when you really can do it in an easy way? Of course, we will explore the physics. I don't know if we can add, like, I don't know, features that 
involves physics for this project, but yeah, maybe we can do it in, in the future. Okay? Yeah, let's start. Thank you for being here and please follow this tutorial. Okay, so I want to show you the changes. And the first thing that I want to show is uh, some fixes. For example, fixing the movement. Someone reported that they were having problems, like they had this lagging experience. Uh, it was not smooth when they move. And this is because uh, this issue uh, that uh, someone described in the comments is because the movement isn't in sync with the frame updates. Every computer has different frame updates because depending on the computer, how powerful, etc. etc. So this is the issue. And that's why sometimes we use uh, a delta time for this. And I will show you. I fixed it in this way. So this is the function that is responsible for the movement. And uh, yeah, we were like uh, checking. Uh, now it's uh, the code is changed. I will show you. But yeah, we were checking the inputs from the users, what key they were pressing. And based on that code number, we updated and, you know, we moved left or right, etc. Now, what I added here, what I changed, uh, it seems that that movement uh, is only being processed once for each key press. So this is because the key down event listener is only called once per key press. So the key down, this one, event listeners that we had previously, is, uh, is only called once per key press to continuously update the movement while the key is pressed. Okay? We should separate events for key down and key up and maintain a state for the keys when being pressed. Okay, don't be confused, please, because I will explain. And for that, okay, we will use an object to track the state of the pressed keys. I created this object to hold the key pressed. So arrow up, arrow down, arrow left, arrow right, and yeah, you know, WASD. So this object uh, is to track the state of the pressed keys. So we will use this object here. After creating uh, this object, what happens? Uh, in this code that we have, you see we have an event listener for key down, okay, and an event listener for key up. We have two. Uh, these event listeners are used to update the key pressed object, this one. We will update this key pressed object with these event listeners. Uh, the update movement then, the update movement function will be called on every frame. So our function that is responsible to, to handle the movement will be updated on each frame. And we will use this delta. I will explain in a second. Okay, but we will call this function in our render function. So to call it on every frame, which checks the state of these keys in the key pressed, checks the states of these keys and moves the camera accordingly. Okay, so this should provide a smoother and continuous movement as long as the keys are, are pressed. Okay, so I will explain. We have this object to hold the keys pressed. Then we create this event listener key down. This is 
when we press the keys. So event listener, key down. Key down is an event that fires when a key is pressed. Uh, we pass the parameter event from and if event that key in key pressed, check if the key pressed is in the key pressed object. So the key we pressed, the user pressed, check if that key that the user pressed is in here on this object, arrow up, arrow down, etc. So if the user presses, uh, for example, arrow down, check. Uh, if it is, if this uh, key pressed by the user, it is on this object, set the value to true. If the user, for example, pressed, the arrow right from false it will turn to true set the value to true okay if not if the key that you know the user pressed like he pressed like i don't know another letter or doesn't matter set it to false like it is by default the same for the other event listener key up in this case so Event listener for when we release the key. So key up is an event that fires when the key is released. Passing the event uh, parameter. Uh, check if the same thing. Check if the key released. This time not the key pressed. But check if the key released is in this key pressed object. This is to make you know continuously this update, not only with key down. Check if this is there. If it is not, if it is, set the value to uh, to true. If it is not, set the value to false. Okay. So if what the user is releasing is here, set it to true. If not, set it to false. Okay. Now. For the delta time, okay, because we we discussed uh, the delta time. One solution is to use this delta time. By using delta time, we can ensure that the movement speed is consistent regardless of the frame rate. It doesn't matter if my computer has another frame rate, uh, another computer has another frame rate. So it, if we have like another calculation. Uh, I will see it differently. Another computer will be different because we have different frame rates. So delta time has this function. By using delta time, we can ensure that this movement is consistent regardless of the frame rates and regardless of what kind of computer you have. Okay. So uh, there are several ways to, to handle this, but the easiest one, and uh, you know he's using this clock from 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 3js it's a built-in okay this creates a clock to keep track of the of the time between frames between these frames so the clock keeps track of this time between frames and so here in our update movement that we updated the code we create this move speed equal to 5. 5 per delta time. So move speed is the distance the camera will move in one second. We multiply by delta to make the movement frame rate independent. You know, independent from the frame rates. This means that the movement will be the same regardless of the frame rate, as I mentioned. And this is important because uh, if the frame rate is low, the movement will be slow. And if the frame rate is high, the movement will be very fast. So this is not what we want. We don't want different performance in different computers. We want the movement to be at the same regardless of the frame rate. We want that speed. We don't want like the car to move 300 kilometers uh, per hour and in, an, in another computer move like just slowly very slowly 
and then we create this variable previous position and the previous position equal to camera dot position dot clone what is this clone the camera position before the movement so before the movement we clone the position before that movement we clone it so this is the variable previous position uh, we want this then we check if key press that arrow right key press is the object that arrow right is this key here this property so key press that arrow right key press that arrow up key press that w etc we access you know the keys inside this object if key press is arrow right or key press dot d it's the same because we will use arrow right or the letter d to move right uh, controls that move right and we pass the parameter move speed okay so controls that uh, we have we are using controls from here the bar uh, okay controls it's the pointer locks that we did in the last tutorial so okay if we press uh, arrow right or d controls that move right and we pass the move speed we want to move with that speed which is 5 multiplied by delta time and the same if uh, left or e or if arrow up or w etc etc we move accordingly and here we will uh, check for the collision because uh, as i said uh, i added the collision so i'm i will collide with the walls and i cannot go through break them through to the other side so i will stay in the room as you know uh, as in a real gallery we cannot pass through walls like a ghost but i will explain in a bit this check collision but i wanted to explain this movement first so i hope you are clear with it and this update function in the end after creating the clock that keeps track of a time between frame rates after creating the variable move speed to move at this speed multiplying by delta time we call it in the render function you know the render function is the method that you know this will be called uh, again and again and again and again these are also the animations so this is a loop and so yeah with this we are sure that we will call on on, on every frame okay i hope you are clear with this i hope uh, who commented about this issue and now it's fixed and I will explain now uh, the collision that I added how we did uh, the, the collision system it could have been very com complex actually if we use like physics for that like AMOJS or CanonJS but yeah we could have used ray casting also i choose to to use uh, the simplest way for this because yeah why not why not so check collision okay this i will show you in the browser in a second how it works i go back Okay, I cannot move anymore. I go right to the wall. I cannot move anymore. Okay, sometimes you may find that I cannot move, like, you know, here, because maybe we are very at the limit and maybe the painting or something is blocking us because, yeah, it recognizes as a bounding box. So just move and try it yourself. But yeah, it works. So how we did this? 
check collision okay here i created uh, this function check collision and in this function uh, we will check if the player the user will intersect with these walls or this solid things that we might have but in this case we only have walls no other obstacles and uh, i create inside this function check collision i create this variable player bounding box okay this is created with uh, creating a new instance of box3 so new 3.box3 and what is this this is to create a bounding box for the player so we have the player which is the camera we create like a bounding box for this to have it with us so that bounding box will serve as you know to find the intersection then i create a variable camera world position that it's an instance from just a vector 3 this creates a vector to hold the camera position then this camera we access get world position to get the camera position and, and store it in this vector okay so we get the, the camera position of this uh, the camera represents the player position in this case okay because the camera position is the player we move we with the camera you know then from this player bounding box which is the box three which is a bounding box we just created i access this set from center and size what is this and i pass as parameters the camera position in the world and this vector 3 with these coordinates so this uh, set from center and size is a method that checks the center and size of this box okay and we set the player's bounding box size and center it in the camera position okay so basically it's just to to uh, takes this and center it and uh, size it uh, of the box and uh, put it uh, in the camera world position we pass it here the parameter so it will center on this camera position then i create uh, a loop why i create this loop for the walls we have the wall group we uh, did this in the last tutorial that we created the walls we created a group of walls and now we look for it you know what the loop is right so wall group the children because the group in 3js has the children inside so world group that children that length i plus plus so loop through this uh, children inside the wall the single wall is wall group that children i the element that is looping through iterating so is you know to get the wall the single wall is the the i that is iterating because i is zero then i is one i is two it iterates on each wall on each children inside this uh, group of 3js and uh, if player bounding box with this method intersects box we pass the wall that bounding box so uh, each wall has this bounding box okay check if the players bounding box intersects with any of the wall bounding boxes okay so if our bounding box the player intersects with these walls left front back you know all the walls bounding boxes because we have a bounding box also the wall have bounding box if it intersects return it true if not return it false 
So this is the function check collision to check if the player's bounding box intersects with the bounding box of the walls around us. I hope it's clear. And that's why I command it every step. And okay, so this function, where I call it, I created this function to check. And where I call it, I call it in this update movement function, where we move. Okay, the user press a keys, it checks this object here. If it's here, return it to true. So it means that we press one of those keys that is in the object, we turn it to true, and then if we then after we turn it to true, we move it right with the speed that we defined here. Five multiplied by data time. Okay. So here in this update movement, we pass this uh, function check collision. And here inside we have camera that position that copy and pass previous position. If you remember, previous position is the position of the camera before the movement. So without getting confused, after the movement is applied, we press a key, we move left or right or forward or backward. After the movement is applied, we check for collisions. We move, check for collisions. Do we have anything? No, continue moving, move again, move again with the speed of five multiplied by delta time. Okay, so we check for collision by calling this function here in the update move and check collision, move and check collision. If the collision is detected at some points, we will revert the camera to the previous position. Okay, that is why we needed this variable here, previous position. And the previous position is camera the position that clone. So the previous position, we clone the previous position where we were. So we are here. Okay, we are here. This will be the previous position when we move. So when we move, that was the previous position. Okay, I am here. I move one unit, one meter forward. I move one weather forward. We check for collision with the function check collision. Uh, am I colliding with the wall? I am not. Continue moving. Another meter forward. Uh, check for collision. Do I have any wall in front of me? Yes, I have. Okay, the check collision uh, finds that I am intersecting with, with, with the wall. What happens in the case if I find this check collision returns that I am uh, colliding, return me to the previous position that we get it with this clone method. Okay, so and that's it. This resets the camera position, which is the player, to the previous position if I am intersecting with the wall. Okay, and that's it. Uh, if you just maybe it might sound a bit confusing. I don't know. Maybe it is just easy as it as it is. But if you find a bit confusing, just you know, go back again just two times, and I am sure you will you will have no problems. So this is for now for uh, the movement update that is fixed. And for the collision, this was the changes that I made for this. What else? I also added the checksters, as you can see. As you can see, the checksters has like these checksters, wall checksters, like it's more realistic than the white material, the simple material. I found on internet, you know, here on public, you can check yourself. Uh, I just put there some some textures that I found. You can experiment and, you know, try all of this if you like 
another chapter, use whatever you want, or I'm sure you can find better chapters for the world uh, on the internet, on Google, on Bing. I use Bing now, I don't use Google anymore, but whatever. Uh, you can use whatever you prefer, and it's here. Let's find uh, world textures. If I'm not wrong, oh, yeah, world textures. Uh, look at the, the comments that I had. It okay. Uh, yeah, I will edit the at least the first time. Maybe we will delete it later to clean it, but I will leave it because I know it. It will be useful, helpful for for some of you. So I changed here where we have the texture loader dot load that we explained uh, the last time that it's the loader for the texture. Uh, I added this uh, IMG white texture JPEG. You can use, you can try the others, but I found this the best one from this. I did in a very, you know, deep research, so you can find better textures. You find it, just please tell me on GitHub. We can maybe change it. Free textures, of course, because, yeah, we we care about copyrights. Uh, yeah, you know this, the uh, world textures, uh, wrap s equal to this repeat wrapping. What is this? Confusing uh, variable. And I added the comment here. Wrap S and wrap T are properties of a texter that define how the texter should be repeated in the X, like left and right, or you know, in the Y direction. So we have a textures. How we want to repeat this, you know, in the X axis or in the Y axis. Uh, these directions. Uh, wrap S is the horizontal direction, the, uh, the X, and wrap T is the vertical direction, the Y. And this repeat wrapping that we get from 3 is one of the available wrapping modes. And it's like, you know, it's the default, usually, wrapping mode for, for textures. Okay. So this means that the taxes will be repeated in this specified uh, direction. In this case, wrap S, which is the horizontal. And again, wrap G in, you know, the vertical, the Y. And this wall taxes repeat that set, it sets, you know, to repeat uh, property which is a vector 2 that defines how many times the textures should be repeated in this uh, horizontal and vertical uh, sorry, uh, directions. And if we, yeah, if we choose uh, one, this means that the text will, will not be repeated, it will only be displayed once uh, on the material, etc, etc. Okay. So I changed also the textures here. So mm, that is for the wall textures. Uh, but I want to show also something else. Uh, another comment asked me how to rotate the paintings. I'll show you here. Uh, they have a problem. They had a problem with the positioning this right and left wall paintings, okay, like position it uh, the correct way, because I suppose, and they confirmed to me, that they had this problem that the paintings were showing in front of us, not, you know, so they wanted to know how to rotate these paintings that they adapt to the left and right walls. I'll show you. So where are our paintings? Uh, you see this code, it's, be it's becoming a bit hard to read. Uh, I know you thought about it. And that's why, that's why I refactored the whole code. And now we have 
like uh, every functionality has a separate file you will see and uh, i really uh, advise you to follow that part a bit later i will do it later uh, it took me some hours actually to to make that refactor uh, but I advise you to follow because that is very important. Maybe one of the most important things, in, you know, when you have a big project, you need to follow these, uh, you know, patterns and uh, best practices, uh, make the code cleaner and modular and readable, maintainable, etc., etc. So yeah, I advise you to to. To check that that part later. So we were in the paintings, right? So we want the painting. Where is the painting? Create painting. Here we are. So in the last tutorial we had only two paintings. So painting one and painting two that we pass here as a parameter to this function create painting which is here we have the image url the width the height and the position as parameters to create every time here we created the texture the material the geometry and the mesh so basically we create this plain geometry for the paintings and every time we want to create a new painting, we call this function, create painting. So painting one equal to create painting, and we pass these parameters here. Custom parameters as we wish. So I pass this zero JPEG, the width 10, five height, and this vector three for the coordinates in X, X, y and z for the painting two of the same thing uh, now for the painting three and painting four for the left and the, uh, for the right and the left walls that was this issue of displaying in front of us instead of adapting to, to, to the wall so what i did here to fix that uh, small issue so painting three here the same thing, we pass the image URL, we pass the width, we pass the height, the coordinates for the vector 3, x, y, and z. And here, uh, to fix it, we rotate this painting. And in this case, so painting 3, rotation that y, we rotate on the y axis, math.pi divided by 2. And uh, we mentioned math.py in previous tutorials, if you remember. But if you don't remember, math.py is 180 degrees. Okay? So this is degrees in radians. So math.py is 180 degrees. It's half. Half the circle. Okay? So math.py divided by 2 is 19 degrees. So I left the comment is if we don't rotate this, it will show up in the front of us instead of lying correctly on the wall. Okay, this is the small fix, small trick. Uh, the same for painting 4, but the only thing, the difference is that it's negative here, okay? So the same as above, but negative. Just negative for, for the other wall. Mm. And yeah, I also add, added the, the walls for the walls, the paintings for the back wall. So also, no, I added two in the right wall, two in the left wall, and two at the back wall. And that's why we have in total uh, eight, eight uh, paintings. And here you will see the same thing for the painting eight, which is 
the painting in the back wall, I rotated it 180 degrees in the y-axis because if I don't do that, we cannot see the paintings from behind. It like we if we if we see it here, like we have the painting of the back wall. So this is the palm of my hand is the painting. Uh, if I am here, I can see a painting. But if I am here, I cannot see anything. I will not see. It will be the texture will be visible only from if we have it in front of us. Okay. So if I have the the, the painting here, I will rotate it 180 degrees to be able to see it. Okay. This you could have run in this small bag if you did it yourself so yeah this is and these are some of the changes uh, for the menu that you see a small animation and other things i'm not going to make the tutorial for that for css because we are not here you know to make a tutorial for about css but for 3js and 3d programming so but you will find these uh, styles in the CSS file here, copy everything. If you want to check how I did it, etc., you can check. You can check uh, here. This, I did it some, you know, I added some keyframes for the animations. Etc. So it's interesting, maybe for for someone. So check here and copy. It's in the GitHub or oh, something else. I had like a comment. I uh, on my GitHub, uh, someone opened an issue in the repository on GitHub because they were were having a problem with a project. So the problem was that they were trying to make the project go live by you know clicking this go live here or you know usually how you do with an HTML. Uh, uh, open on live server, you know, on HTML. They open on live, uh, open with live server. So open with live server. But this doesn't work like that. Uh, in the last tutorial, I think I didn't mention this. So uh, sorry if I didn't mention. I think I did. I don't remember. But yeah, to run the the project, uh, every time when you are on the GitHub repository, click the button, the green button there, which is uh, can I find just a second, just a second. Let me be. I have it here. I'll show you. I updated also the readme file so. You have it everything explained here. Okay, so you have everything explained here. Of course, the first thing first, uh, you need uh, okay, download it here. You see this green button code. You can clone it with git clone and pass this URL here. So create a folder, open the terminal and git clone URL. Or just download zip and open with Visual Visual Studio. Okay, I remember someone like corrected me like for the wrong spelling because I say Visual, but yeah, Visual Studio. Whatever. And uh, git clone or download zip. After you have this project on your computer. Of course, you need Node.js. You should know this, but yeah, if you don't know, you need Node.js environment because JavaScript will run on the browsers, supported by you know the browsers. But locally, we need Node.js to have the environment to be able to run JavaScript because Node.js it's not a programming language, okay? Uh, of course, you need Visual Studio. Here are the links to download. And then after cloning or download the zip here, 
clone or download you in the root in the root folder just run npm i or npm install it will install the node modules all the dependencies this big guy here this node modules that has like you know it's heavy as a black hole so it will install this I think because we as we said and mentioned we never never post this on github they are too heavy uh, after installing the dependencies, we run cdsrc here. Mm -hmm. Okay, stop the server. Okay, from the beginning. As let's say I'm from the beginning, I have the git bar, so I usually do pwd to to check the path. But uh, you can do uh, CD if you don't use git bash, but you use PowerShell. You use CD, it will show the path. I do PWD to check the path, and I am on SRC folder. Okay, I did CD uh, dot dot to go back one directory. So now I am, you know, at the this 3D art gallery the root folder. Here you do npm install or npm i. After installing the node modules, you run cd src. With cd src, you go inside this src folder here. Because it's here that you should run the next command to run the project live. Look, I am here now on SRC, you see? And here, just npx vite run vite, which is the build tool we use to run our project locally, okay? Our local server, npx vite. That's it. In just a second, less than a second you will see this address here local or press h for help but just click here and you have the project live okay if you need help or you know press h r to restart the server uh, u to show server url O to open in browser, C to clear the console. Yeah, you clear everything. And uh, yeah, and Q to, to quit, just to quit. Okay, it stopped, so you need to run it again if you stop. Vite is very nice. Vite is very nice. Now I only use Vite. Uh, I don't want to see any more create React. Up, for example, for those of you who use React App, I think it's, it's, it's going to die, and I think it's, it's dying. You know, I don't know if uh, anybody uses it anymore. Um, I think neither is his creator likes it anymore. But yeah, Vite is very, very cool. It's the creator of Vue, Vue.js, that uh, created. And I love Vue, by the way, lately. I'm not using React, but I'm using the view for my work and also whatever. So this is the problem that uh, someone opened an issue on GitHub for this. So keep in mind, Node.js, you need the editor, of course, after installing Node.js. And Node.js is pretty straightforward to just download, install, and it will do automatically. Uh, open on VS Code and you know, follow these steps that we just uh, mentioned. Okay. For now, is this uh, the next step will be to to refactor this whole code. Okay, and we will create a file for every functionality. Okay, it will have uh, it. It's not so simple because yeah. It's a mess with a big uh, 
a very long code and so I advise you to follow this part too okay I will do it in a second maybe I will go and you know drink a glass of, of water because yeah <laughs> I'm talking too much okay now I will show you how to create the info card so the feature here that we get close to the artworks and we show the information so it's a nice feature to have not only for this project but also for other projects that you might create in the future so it would be good to, to, to learn it. Let's get back to our code. And here, as you can see, there is a lot of changes because, as I said, I refactored all the code. And now we have this structured folders. You see, for every functionality, we have a separate file. And it's very clean now. You see now this is our main JS. It was like 500, 600 uh, uh, lines of code before I refactored. And now it's just, you know, some line of codes and everything is uh, cleaner. I will explain this later, but for now, I just want to, to, to show you how I did the info card and then I will I will show you more in detail about the refactoring. Okay. So for the info card, I created a separate file because okay, after refactoring the code, I created everything like you see, bounding box, sailing, event listeners, floor, lighting. Menu, movement, painting, data, painting, GIF, paintings, rendering, scene, etc., etc., etc. So for the info card is this component here, this module, painting info. Okay. And uh, here in painting info, I create two functions: display painting info and hide painting info. One function is to display, and one is responsible to, to hide the card. So this function, first of all, we create a variable info element and this variable is just to, you know, to get the reference to, to the DOM, to this element with ID painting info, which is this one here in the, in the HTML. So this ID here, we get a reference to this because inside here, we want to create you know that element to show or hide so after creating this info element uh, we set the content inside and to create the content inside this is javascript it's nothing to do with 3js is vanilla javascript vanilla vanilla you know javascript plain javascript uh, to create uh, content inside we use inner HTML so info element that inner HTML equal to first we create a title and this title is from info that title and this info is an argument passed here I will explain that where we get it from so Info that title, uh, info that artist, info that description, and the year. Okay, so we have these elements here. And to display, we use this class list dot add and the class show. This is to show to to add the, the the class show here. So to this element here, we add the class show because we want to point to that later. The same thing with this function, hide painting info. We create this info element to get the reference to that ID, painting info. And then we just remove the class show. So 
So here we add this class show and here we remove this class show. And that's it. Two functions, hide and display. Then when, when we will use this and where? Here in the rendering, as you can see now, this rendering is now extracted here in a separate file. But this was, you remember in the last part of main.js, there was the function render, which is, you know, uh, the animate uh, function to loop and render the scene and do the other stuff that will, okay, render on every frame. Because yeah, in this render, we call this request animation frame, which calls the random function again. So it runs over and over and over. So this is the function to render things. But yeah, I refactored, so it's not in main.js, it's everything here. So I import three here. I import this display painting info and hide painting info from painting info.js, this one that we were exploring together to export these functions from one module to another module. Again, this is JavaScript. Uh, you add this export at the, uh, at the start. Okay, so export function, display function, etc., etc. You can also make it an error function like export const display info equal Okay, so now, now this is an error function. Yeah, we can make it like that. Even here, export const hide painting info equal error function. Okay, as you prefer. It's the same thing, just, you know, this is more modern, the error function. Okay, so to export functions, you add this export here at the beginning. And then, uh, if you, there is also export default, usually when you have only one uh, component that you want to use, you do the export default, etc. But here, export const is just when you have in one file different functions that you want to export. This is another topic. But yeah, in basically you just add this export and you can export it in another file. So here, import. In this case, you need to add the brackets here if you export it like this. It, if, it, if it was export default, it will be without brackets. Again, this is another topic. You can uh, research more about this, ways to, you know, to export modules in for JS, uh, sorry, in JavaScript, because this is plain JavaScript. But yeah, we export these two functions, okay, to use it here. And in this uh, uh, render function, okay, you remember, again, this is function, we can, again, convert it into a narrow function. It's not a problem, it's the same thing. Uh, in this render function, which calls itself in a recursive, it's a recursive call with this request animation frame, again and again. Here, what we do, after we pass this update movement, you remember the function update movement, which was in main.js. But again, I will explain all this later, but for now, just focus on this uh, feature to display the info card. So we call this update info here in the render function. Uh, we create, first of all, we create a distance threshold equal to eight. It's like eight units or eight meters in this case. Okay. So this distance threshold is the distance that will be from us, the user, the player, and the, the painting, the artwork, as you prefer saying painting or artwork. So it's the distance. Why we want this distance? We want because at a certain distance we want to display or hide 
that painting. So we need the variable to, to store the distance. Then we create this let because it will, you know, it will not be a constant, it will change. We will use it. You know this const let in JavaScript. No need for, for that. So we create this painting to show. What is this? This is the variable which is responsible uh, to store a value in which we want to show the painting or we want to not show the painting. Uh, explaining it a bit in detail, I will show you the code here. We have these paintings. Okay, don't worry much about how we get now these paintings in this uh, new refactored code. But these paintings, you know, we get it as an argument. Uh, we passed it here for this setup rendering. I will explain it later. But for now, we loop through these paintings. Okay, paintings that for each. And uh, then we create a distance to painting. And to get the distance to this painting from the camera to the painting, because the player, remember, the player is the camera. So we are the camera that we move as, you know, the player, the player, the, the user. So to get the distance from us to the painting, we use camera, which we are, the user, that position, and we use this method here distance to and distance to we pass a parameter which is the object that we want to get the distance to and the object is the painting we want the distance to the painting so the parameter will be this painting that position get distance from the painting okay and we store it in this variable distance to painting simple as that now we create an if statement to check if distance to painting, this one, we get the distance that can be one, two, three, depending how far it is. If this distance is less than distance threshold, this variable here, which is eight. So if the distance from us and the painting is less than 8, okay, then the painting will be showed. So the painting will be stored in this variable, painting to show. That's why we created it, okay? Like a way to, you know, to know. So set painting to show to, to our painting, okay? In this case, the painting will show. We, we have that value. And then, how we will use this logic here that we set the painting to painting to show. If painting to show, like if this is true, okay? So, if there is a painting there to show, because if this is true, so it means that uh, we are less than 8 meters from the painting. So if this is true, and we are less than 8 meters, call this function, display painting info, which is this function here that we imported from this file, which creates this H, uh, HTML elements. Okay. So if painting to show is true, Call this function and pass inside painting to show that user data that info and this is an object from painting data okay so painting to show user data that info because This user data here, we will get it from the painting. So each painting, you know, so 
we'll have a user data and an info. I will explain this on how I refactored the code. But yeah, at the moment, you just need to know this. Display painting info and pass, you know, the info of that painting. Or else, if this painting to show is not true, hide the painting info. So do not show. Okay, and that's it. This is, we have this HTML here, HTML element, and we have the styles for this painting info. I added the styles, you know, some transition. I added at the top, etc. etc. You can find these styles on GitHub. Okay, and that's it. This way we can display the info card. Okay, for each painting. The painting changes and the info card, of course, changes. That's it. Okay, guys, now I will explain uh, the refactored code. So, as you can see, I have many files now, and the main.js is cleaner. So, let's see. These are the imports. Okay. So, first of all, we import everything from three, as usually. Then we import scene and setup scene from scene.js. Okay. And then scene.js. Here, okay. Then we ext uh, uh, get this these variables from the setup scene. Let's take a look at this uh, scene. And it is on this file scene scene. Okay, here. Okay, so I extracted all the logic and the code for the scene in a separate file. Okay. So basically, we Im import uh, everything S3. Then we import the pointer locks. We create this uh, scene here, as usually. Create a new instance of three scene. This is the same code, but with a difference that we have a function. We create a function for that code that we had on main.js. On main.js, we had like uh, the camera, the render, uh, controls and everything, the same thing, okay? But we create a function that we can export. This is the difference, okay? So get that code and create a function which can be export, okay? And that's it. So I added some detailed comments you can read and I think they will be useful. If you forget something, for example, you can see the code and check the comments. Okay, so you create the function and you can export it in uh, other modules. Okay, so here there is Pretty much the same code that we had on, on main.js. It's just that we export it now here. I don't know if I changed anything here. But yeah, the main thing is that we declare these variables, camera, controls, and renderer. And I return them here. I return the camera, controls, and render so that we can use them in the other modules. So this function returns this camera controls and render, so we can use it in the other modules. Okay, so we get the scene here. Uh, okay, as you can see now, we can get this uh, camera controls and render here that we were returning from setup scene function, okay? This is just a simple texture loader 
to load the texter and we need it here because we are using it here as a as an argument so then we have the walls we also extracted uh, the code for the walls in this create walls function which is imported from walls.js as you can see let's take a look so walls.js the same thing we need the three here because okay and we create a function which can be exported the same thing so this function takes two parameters scene and texter loader because yeah we need scene when we add things scene.add for example and the texter loader because yeah we need the texter loader to create the textures and yeah this is there are also comments everywhere here and uh, yeah as you can see this function returns the wall group so the wall group is the group that has all the walls front back left and right so this function will return this wall group and we can use it in the other modules as we are using it here to render the walls in the scene because the main js is the primary let's say file to render everything the main js has modules that we need to render all the scene okay so for the walls we have it here we create this variable even though we it's, yeah we use it here but we create this variable and call this create walls which takes the scene and the texture loader so this is uh, the beauty of functional programming because if you see here this create walls takes two parameters okay scene and texture loader so how we get this scene because i don't have the scene here i don't have the scene here so we get it when we call it here when we call it here we also pass it here so scene here i get it from this scene from scene.js so i import the scene from scene.js here on main.js i pass it here as a, an argument and then in the walls.js i can use this here you can see i use it in this scene data just to add this wall group basically i need it yeah just to add this wall group. but i don't have the scene here so i need to 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 get it from main.js which is also uh, taken from this, uh, you know, scene.js. Okay, and that's it. that's it for the walls. The same thing for the floor. We import this function, setup floor for floor.js. And it's uh, floor.js. Okay. Yes. the same thing import 3 because we will use it create this uh, function that we can export and again the scene is passed in main.js where this setup floor is called so we don't have the scene here to use it but in main.js when we call this function setup floor we pass the scene from yeah the scene.js okay you see the beauty of functional programming it's the code is cleaner of course and yeah for, for the texture loader uh, i just create a new from three because i can create it from three or i could pass it you know but i create a new texture loader and yeah the same thing and this does it return no this just adds the floor to the scene that's why i needed this 
this adds a floor to the scene and when we will call it here you know, on main.js it will render the floor the same thing for the sailing you see how clean it is like this way and we can control and we can maintain the project better we can read it better if someone else uh, wants to work with this project they can read it it's more readable and it's uh, more maintainable and also for where are we okay sailing floor we explain it the lighting okay let's yeah let's start with yeah with paintings or lightings because yeah painting is a bit more complex so lighting we create this function setup lighting which takes scene and paintings as parameters that yeah we will pass it here on main.js always this is the logic paintings we get it from create paintings from painting js and we pass it here we create the ambient light and the spotlight we did this in the old tutorials we set up this settings for the spotlights and we return the spotlight here to create the spotlight uh, we use the spotlight and uh, create like one two three and four with these coordinates okay and we add it to the scene the spotlight and also the other spotlights and that's why we needed the scene here and that is for the lighting then we have paintings we use this create paintings from paintings js find it here so to create this uh, you know we extracted that code for paintings that we had that function create paintings also in main.js and now we will use also the painting data which is another separated file painting data which has the data for you know all the paintings we have info object here etc etc the image src width and height so this array that from if you don't know creates an array from an array like object the first parameter is the array like object the second parameter is a map function uh, this creates like uh, an array of four because we we, we will render like uh, four paintings for a wall four 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 and four at the back the map function checks two parameters uh, one is the element and one is the index the map function returns the value that will be added to the new array okay so this map will return the value that will be added to to the new array in this case we are returning an object with the painting data so we have the painting data here uh, this is just a placeholder for the element uh, we are not using and we yeah, we don't need it at the moment and i is the index and we use it to set the painting number and uh, since you know we add like plus one because uh, yeah the index starts at zero as you know for the arrays so zero plus one but just don't get confused of this you can take a look yourself find it on github so yeah it's just you know we can we can change this actually i will change it because i i will add like description for each each uh, artwork so i will change this i just wanted to make it quickly you know four paintings for each wall just to set the position but we will change this so don't mind too much but this is the idea we import this painting data for 
from this painting data JS. We create this function, create paintings, which takes scene and texture loader that again uh, these arguments will be passed from main.js where this create paintings is called here create paintings is called we pass scene and texture loader we create first of all a variable which stores an empty array this will be the array of paintings then we loop through the painting data that we get from this file that we we already seen then we create a mesh for each painting like we create you know a 3d object for each painting and the 3d object is a mesh and the mesh is a combination of geometry and material as you already uh, no, by now. Then we set the position of the painting and the rotation of the painting. Then we add a user data property to the painting that will hold the painting info. Okay, information. So painting that user data, we create this type of painting. We just need this uh, so we can check if the object is a painting or not. So it's a type of painting and the info we add data that info we add the painting info to this user data object and data is the current painting object in the forage loop okay is the is the painting object we are iterating in this uh, loop and the info is the property of the painting object that holds the painting information and we saw that we have we have the information here for for each painting. Yeah, then painting uh, that cast shadow true to set the painting to cast the shadow and receive shadow to set the painting to receive the shadow. Then in the end, we push the painting to this array of paintings. Okay, so we have the paintings there. And we return these paintings, okay? We return this array of paintings. So we have the paintings in this array that we can use later. So here, here we call this create paintings. We create this variable paintings, which calls, you know, it's assigned to this function. And we can use them later, the paintings, which is needed here in the bounding box that we will check. And also in setup rendering that we will check too is used here as a parameter. You see, like uh, how nice it like this way. It's different, but it's way cleaner and also maintainable. And yeah, the lighting we have the bounding boxes. We have the setup play button. Uh, yeah, let's check the bounding boxes, which which checks the walls and the paintings. You see, is to create the bounding boxes for the walls and also for the paintings. Uh, we need this because we use the collision. You remember? So for the collision, we use these bounding boxes that we checked if they intersect with with the player bounding box okay so we have this file here bounding box yeah we import three from three then we uh, we create this create bounding boxes function which checks these objects and what is happening here we have also this condition if array that is array This like uh, the contrary. It's like it it turns from true to false. So if it's not uh, uh, an array, and it, if this case we we check if the object if the object is an array or not. If it's not, 
we will assume that this is a 3JS group. It's not an array. In that case, if it's a 3JS group, if this is not an array, we set objects to objects.children because we assume this is a 3JS group. And I will explain it more in detail here. Because in 3JS, a three group is a type of object used to create, like, you know, parent child relationship between objects. So there is a parent, and then there are, you know, the children. And uh, yeah, in this uh, group, in other words, a group is an object that can contain other objects in, inside. That's it. And we, we want sometimes this group because we can manipulate several objects uh, at a time as one. Okay, so the children property uh, of the group, of three group, is an array that contains all the objects. Okay, so the child objects inside that are part of, of, of this group. So when we add an object to a group uh, with group.add, as we added the walls, wall group.add, front wall, uh, back wall, left wall, and right wall, we can access that object with group.children. So we can access them uh, when we need. So in our code, the create walls returns a group for the walls. You remember, we have the function create walls. It, it returns a group that contains several uh, wall objects. And when we pass this group to these create bounding boxes, because these create bounding boxes will be used to create bounding boxes for the walls and for the paintings. But the walls are a free group. The paintings are an array. So this function here, to check the object's parameter, an array and also a free group, we did it like this, with this conditional. OK? I hope it's clear. But yeah. Uh, we, when we pass these uh, objects here to this function, create bounding box, uh, we want to create a bounding box for each wall in the three group. And to do that for the walls that are a group, we need to loop over all the children, all the children array of this group. So when we call create bounding box walls here, create bounding box walls, the objects parameter of this function is a group object. So for the walls, when we call it, it's a group object. And yeah, we need to, in order to, to loop over this wall in the group, we need to set objects to objects.children. Okay, I, I know it may sound a bit confusing, but basically we are using this uh, create bounding boxes for the walls, which are a group, and for the paintings, which are an array. If they are a group, we need to, to set this to the objects we need to set to objects that children, which is then the array of, of objects, wall objects. Uh, so this was when uh, these objects were a group like the walls. What what about when they are an array? As for the paintings, in that case, like. Uh, create paintings that we had in paintings. 
paintings are an array here, as you can see. And in that case, uh, since create paintings returns an array and not a three group, the objects parameter, this one, objects, is already an array. So we don't need to do anything in that case, as I explained in the comments uh, below. So for that reason, that's why we start this function by checking if it's not an array. If object is not an array, it assumes that it's a group and sets objects to objects. Uh, if objects is already an array, it skips this, this step. So if it is an array and not a group, it will skip this step. And in that case, we loop through objects, which is an array, and we set, you know, a bounding box for each object. Then object that bounding box set from object, which set the bounding box to that object, which is, you know, the object iterated each object. Yeah, maybe I didn't explain very well this part, but yeah, you can read the comments and I'm sure you will get it. Because yeah, I commented this whole thing here and you will get it. This is just because we are using the create bounding boxes here function to pass the walls and to pass the paintings. And they are different. One is a group, a three group, and one is an array. And we need this check. Uh, we have this add objects to scene, which takes scene and paintings. What is that? We have this in scene helper JS. Is this just this piece of code here? This function will take the scene and an array of objects, which can be passed dynamically. Uh, we choose and add each object to the scene. So it will uh, loop objects that for each, add each object, okay? So this is just a function, an helper function, to add each object to the scene. Why we need this? We need it for the paintings, as you can see. We call these paintings here with create paintings. We created the paintings, we return the paintings, the paintings array. We return these paintings. Okay, we create it and we return these paintings. But we need to, to, everything should be added to the scene as you know by now. And with this helper function, add objects to the scene, we can add these paintings. Okay, and that's it. Then we have setup play button. You see that in, on main.js, pretty much we see everything that we have. So we see what we have here. It's very readable, even for someone else that just opened our project and they want to take a look and understand the code. They see here on main.js everything. And yeah, they can understand and redirect it to these functions and modules. So we have set Setup play button and the file here setup play button is for menu JS and this is for the menu to show or hide the menu. Okay. Ask, show and hide the menu. That's it. Okay. So we had this hide menu and show menu. You already know these functions because you had it on main.js. I just extracted the logic. We just uh, added this export to export it. Also the start experience you already know. Also for the play button, which just gets a reference to this play button in HTML. 
with ID play button, this one. Then adds a click event listener to the play button to start, you know, the experience. And that's it. We have also the manual logic here, separated. Uh, this play button, as we saw, is uh, exported to main.js and it, we pass the controls to it here because we don't have the controls, you see, the functional programming. We don't have the controls on this file, on this module. So we call this function here and we pass it from, you know, from here, from main.js because we get it here. We get it from setup scene. Okay, so we import the setup scene from scene.js. Importing the setup scene, we destructure these uh, variables for camera controls and render that we get from setup scene. And then we pass it, we pass these controls also here on setup play button, and then we use it here. On menu.js. Mm, that's it, the logic. What else we have? We have setup event listeners that again it takes controls as a parameter. Setup event listeners, okay, here. And this is the logic and the code for the functions onky down and onky up. The object uh, key pressed that remember we we created in the last tutorial is from this movement uh, file, which is a separate uh, file. Movement here. Uh, we have this key pressed, which is uh, okay. Export const key press, so we can export this. And we import it here from movement. We also import this show menu from menu.js that we already saw. And we add uh, the controls parameter, which is the pointer lock controls. And this path on main.js here. Setup event listener. We pass controls that we get from setup scene. Okay. The same logic, you see, the beauty of functional programming. And then we add the, the event listeners uh, to the document, which is the whole page. So we have key down, uh, we have key up and unlock. Okay, so key down is the, uh, the event when the key is pressed. Okay, key up is when the key is released. And uh, yeah, unlock is when the pointer is unlocked. So here we, we add an event listener to the controls to show the menu when the pointer is locked. So show the menu. Okay, we already did this part for these functions. Uh, the event is the object that has the key property. So event.key in key pressed. Check if the key pressed by the user is in this key pressed object. If yes, we will set the value to, to true. So if the user presses arrow up, we will set this false to true. If the user presses arrow right, we will set this to true and so on. Okay. If the user, if you know, the key that the user presses is, is, is not, we will set it to false as it is by default when the key is released for the on key up. So the same as for key down, we set to false when the key is released. So if the key is in this key pressed object, we set it to false when the key is released. So the user releases the key, we set it to false if it's already true. Okay, this is for the event listeners. 
we have this uh, movement uh, yeah that we we did in this tutorial that we fixed and updated for smoother experience so yeah i added some comments here details comment so you can read for everything but yeah just to make a recap we have this update movement always exported we chase delta controls camera and walls okay uh, we get these parameters from setup rendering where this function update movement is called and if you see here in rendering.js we have this function setup rendering okay you see these parameters okay so we take them from this setup rendering and setup rendering gets the parameters from main.js the setup rendering gets these parameters from main.js because it's here setup rendering because yeah we get it from setup here because update movement is called here in the yeah in this rendering js okay you see it checks these parameters here when where we call it parameters we get from setup rendering above from this which gets from min.js as we as we said this move speed is 5 uh, multiplied by by delta time move speed is the distance the camera will move in one second we multiply by delta delta to make the movement frame rate independent or you know the frame rates this means that the movement will be the same regardless of of uh, the frame rate that each computer might be different and this is important because the frame rate is low the movement will be slow and if the frame rate is high the movement will be fast this is not what we want we want the movement to to be the same regardless of the frame rate okay we have this previous position which is equal to camera that position that clone we clone the camera position and store it in this previous position okay because we will use this to reset the camera when we check the collision. So this previous position is the position before uh, before we, we, we move. So if we collide with the wall, we will reset this position to the previous position. So check the, the keys that the user is, is, is pressing. This code is self-explanatory. If we press arrow right or D, move right, and we pass the speed of this speed. And then we check for the collision. After the movement is applied, we check for collision by calling this function, check collision, which checks these parameters of camera and walls. And if a collision is detected, we revert the camera's position to its previous position. Okay, so it cannot move through through the wall preventing the player yeah to to go through uh, yeah if check collision uh, comma that position that copy previous position someone might ask here why uh, position copy and not set position okay this will reset the camera to previous uh, we use copy instead of set because set will set the position to the same object. So if we change the previous position, the camera position will also change. Copy creates a new object and uh, with the same values as the previous position. So that's why it's this different. So don't use set but use copy here to the previous position okay so we export this check collision because we need it check collision checks the camera and the walls as parameters and returns true if there is a collision okay and false if there is not a collision the camera parameter is the camera object and the walls parameter is the walls group not array the parameter are passed from update movement function where check collision is called 
okay we have this update movement that has these parameters and we get this from there because we call this check collision inside update movement uh, and update movement gets the parameters from setup rendering where it is called so we get check collision parameters from this update movement and update movement gets this parameter from setup rendering where update movement is called and uh, setup rendering gets the parameters from main.js you see setup rendering gets these parameters camera etc from main.js because we are importing them here from the files and this is the logic uh, so we check uh, we create this and ex export this check collision we inside this function what happened uh, we for a recap we create a player bounding box which is an instance of three box three that creates a bounding box for this player or user we create a variable for the camera world position which again is an instance of three vector three class and it creates a vector to hold the camera's uh, world position then we access this get world position method from with the camera camera that get world position and we pass camera world position here this vector three and this gets the camera's world position and store it in this uh, camera world position uh, you know that the camera represents always the user the player uh, in in our case then this player bounding box access this set from center and size method and this sets the player bounding box to the camera's world position and size the size here is one 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 because the camera is a single point uh, this set from center and size uh, method checks two parameters so the center which is the camera world position and the size which is this vector three okay the center is a vector uh, a vector three that represents the center of the bounding box the size is also a vector three that represents the size of the, the bounding box. Yeah, the size is the distance from the center to the edge of the bounding box in each direction. So if the size is one, 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 the bounding box will be two units wide. So one, 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 and the two units tall and two units deep. If the size is 2 to 2, the bounding box will be 4 units wide, 4 units tall, and 4 units deep, etc. You can read more here if you forget or if you need again. And yeah, we create uh, this loop to loop through the children uh, of, of the walls. We loop through each wall and we get the wall. And then if the player bounding box intersects, with this walls bounding box with this method intersects box and we pass the walls bounding box so it's like the code is self-explanatory and this naming is very clear so if the player bounding box intersects with the walls bounding box okay return true if not if they doesn't uh, intersect return false okay and that's it for the check collision uh, function and that's it i think we covered everything and setup rendering two setup rendering which is in the rendering rendering okay here the rendering is, you know, if you remember the last part of the code, in the end, we had this rendering function, which 
in a recursive uh, does a recursive call and uh, it calls again and again in makes a loop so yeah we pass these parameters which we get from main js we create this clock from the built-in 3.clock it, it keeps track for the time between uh, the frames and yeah we create this render we extract it from main.js we have a variable that we need delta because as we mentioned uh, for the delta which is clock that get delta basically 3.clock that get delta and this returns the time in seconds since the last frame uh, then we have this update movement to update uh, the movement we takes these parameters delta controls camera and walls that we you know we explained before explaining the update movement function we create this variable distance threshold and set it to 8 for example or you choose to set the distance from the player and the painting okay because we need this distance to create the 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 logic for the info card so if we are closer than this distance we want to show the info if we are you know away than eight meters we don't want to show the info card we hide it okay so we also create this painting to show variables and we will see why we need it we change these paintings that we pass here as a, an argument that we take from create paintings uh, function we loop through all the paintings which was an array remember that we discussed before we loop through all the paintings and this distance to paintings uh, variable will be the camera that position that distance to the paintings is self-explanatory we get the distance to the painting okay so this variable here is to get the distance to the painting how far is this painting because we have this threshold of eight units eight meters so we get this with this method distance to and pass the painting position and then if this distance to painting is less than eight meters is less than distance threshold so if we are like uh, seven meters away from the painting we set this painting to show that we created here to painting this sets painting to show to this painting which is lesser than eight okay in this case we know that the painting will show we will use this with this value because we know that in this case painting to show is set to this painting which is lesser than eight units so we will show the painting and here we see if painting to show if this is true and we are less than eight we are closer to 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 the artwork display the play the painting info if not hide the painting info and this to display as uh, we saw already we get it from this display uh, painting info and hide painting info which is from painting info.js here okay display displays this element and hide just removes the class show and display as this class show because 
yeah to this element with id painting info we add the class show when we want to show the painting we remove the class show when we want to hide because we have this in the styles in the end you will see we have a style for the painting info show so painting info dot show for the class of show we apply these styles and we remove or add and we have the other styles as well and that's it i think we covered everything yeah i think we covered everything so this is the refactor i think you like it more like this yeah leave me your thoughts what do you think about it and this is for this tutorial uh, let's finish here thank you for following this and uh, see you Welcome back, developers and 3D design enthusiasts. Today we are journeying further into the world of 3JS as we continue building our 3D art gallery. First of all, you can see that we have brand new textures and they are in 4K resolution for the best quality. And yeah, the difference is visible. I think it's much, much better now. I have added a new ceiling, the walls, and I really like the floor. There are details, and the quality is good. Then we have integrated the pointer lock controls toggle, so now you can seamlessly toggle between game mode, giving you the smooth navigation around the gallery. And also, the UI interaction mode, letting you interact with on-screen elements at ease. As you can see, I press the space key and the pointer lock controls are disabled. So now I can use the mouse events. I can click and you see, I'm redirected to my landing page, to my shop, or wherever you want the user to be redirected. This is the feature that some people asked for it in the comments, so I added it. But yeah, you whoever wanted to touch the, the artwork in the gallery, but you had that do not touch sign and that stopped you, right? Well, now you will be able to interact with the paintings. You can touch and you can click. So you can do whatever you want. You can uh, attach other event listeners you can add your own logic but for now i added the logic to simply navigate to an external website which will be our website but feel free to to make your your own logic about it it's easy customizable now so you can do it uh what else uh if that's not exciting enough for this part six uh we have introduced also a VR button for VR support. You can see we have the Enter VR here. This is also a feature that uh, someone requested me by writing me on private. So I couldn't uh, make it sooner. And I'm sorry for that because, yeah, uh, that's someone that wrote to me, wanted a bit, you know, he had this project and really needed this feature. But I was very busy, but in the end, yeah, I at least started this feature to implement it. So now we have this Enter VR, and we need to install an extension for this because I don't have a VR device. And of course, I cannot test it because I would need a VR device or headsets. But uh, if you don't have it, but you want to implement this, you can download an extension on Google Chrome. And that extension is called, I think, uh, WebXR Simulator. 
WebXR simulator, yeah. Yes, yeah, this one. Install it. And then go to your project. Open the, the developer tools. And here you should find this WebXR. Open it and you can see now that we have this simulator and we can choose. For example, we have here Oculus Quest or Oculus Go, etc. Google, uh, Samsung Galaxy. But yeah, leave it here, Oculus Quest. And if we press Enter VR, you see that the scene turns black. Of course, I cannot test it because I don't have the headsets, but it shows that it works. And if we go to the console, you see WebXR session started because I console logged this. So it means that it works. We will go further into this and we will explore it together. But follow me on this part six. All right, let's dive right in. Now we'll be adding an audio guide feature to our 3D art gallery. This is an awesome feature that you could use to explain your projects or simply to guide users through your gallery. And for this, let's start by setting up some basic controls for our audio guide in our HTML. Here. We will need a div uh, with a class of audio controls and two buttons, one to start the audio and one to stop the audio. So the shortcut for that is audio controls and two buttons, shortcut again for button, button, start audio. Okay, we have these basic controls for this. Now let's switch to our JavaScript and we are going to create a module called Audio Guide where we will handle the audio functionality. So create a new module here, call it Audio Guide. And as always, we import three from three In this first line, we will import the three as we always need it, and we will declare a variable sound. This variable will be our audio source. Okay, so we need an audio source. This audio source will be this variable, let sound. After having this audio source variable, what we need, we need the function that will make this possible and let's call it setup audio. And since we needed to export it, it will be export cost setup audio. Okay. So narrow function. Because we will need everything here inside. So we have this uh, setup audio. Uh, this setup audio will check as a parameter of the camera because we need this camera parameter. I will explain everything, no worries. So the first thing 
is for the audio, uh, like in real life, we have the music. Uh, to be able to listen to the music, we need our ears, right? So we listen to the music, we need some ears. Exactly. And the same thing in 3JS, we need this listener that will be, will act uh, as our ears, okay? So, a variable for that, const listener. We are not going to call it ears, so yeah. Listener. And this, uh, we will get it from the audio listener uh, class from 3. So, new 3 dot audio listener. It is, oh no, it is silly. Parenthesis. Okay. Uh, make sure you are writing inside this function, okay? Because when we will export it, this logic will be inside this setup audio, not outside, because you will get errors, etc. Et so we defined our first function, and the only one that we will need actually. This checks the camera as a parameter. And now inside this function, we will create an instance of this three audio listener that, as we said, is essentially our ears to listen to, to, to the audio. And the last thing is uh, this listener will be added to the camera because, let me explain, camera dot add we pass the listener. This means that as the camera moves, the sound will change accordingly, creating a realistic audio experience. Okay? That's why we attach this listener to the camera. After that, what we need? We will need uh, to create a new object, which is 3.audio, to pass our listener. This will represent the audio source in our scene. Let me explain. We have this variable that we created, and we said that this will be our audio source. So, sound equal to new 3 that audio and to this audio we pass the listener okay this will represent the audio source now what we need we need to instantiate an audio loader which will allow us to load our audio file because yeah we need to load the file and to load the file that we will download and put it somewhere in our project to load this file we need a loader and this loader is from three audio loader and that's it we will create uh, for this const const audio loader And this audio loader, as we said, will be instantiated from three dot audio loader. It is here audio loader. Parenthesis, don't forget. Now that we have this audio loader, we are calling the load method and we will pass the file path where we have uh, this sound, this audio. And we will also have another parameter apart from the file, and I will explain while writing it down. Audio loader dot load. Pass the file path here. That can be, yeah, we will add the folder sounds. Inside this folder sounds eventually will be the name of, of the, the audio. Let's rename our audio audio guide because maybe we will have more than one audio. So that OGG, you know the format OGG. 
And here, as I said, inside this, oh, I'm outside, okay. Inside, we'll, we will also pass a callback function. And this callback function will run once the audio file is loaded. So function that we will run once the audio file is loaded. We will pass here the buffer. Why? Because, because here we will set the buffer of our sound object to the loaded audio data. And the naming in 3JS is always intuitive. So we use this uh, methods that the naming can explain itself. So sound, our sound, set buffer. And we just pass the buffer that I passed it here as a parameter. Also, this callback that uh, will run once the audio file is loaded, we will set the buffer, but also we want to, to, to enable looping because, yeah, for example, I want to add the background music at the moment and I want just to, to loop it. Uh, the same thing, the naming is uh, self-explanatory of this method. So sound that set loop and you set it to true. Simple as that. Also, you might want to, to adjust the volume. Sound that set volume. And from a range from 0 to 1, you can choose 0 0.5. Okay. Make sure everything is inside the curly brackets of this setup audio. Now that we have this sound and we created the loader, we need uh, two functions. And we create the start audio, the function to start the audio that we will call it, and also a function to stop the audio. And these two functions are pretty straightforward. Okay. So export const start audio. In this case, to follow the logic, uh, when you create things, when you create functions in programming, you want that if there is a if there is a sound, you want to play it, but you want to check if there is a sound, play it. Then if it's currently playing, then pause it. Okay, this is the logic because you you had the sound. Okay, now you just want to start or stop it. Export const Yeah, 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 it's inside uh, Just put it outside It's a separate function As I said, it's pretty straightforward is there is a, if there is a sound if sound if true just play it and for that sound that play simple as that the same logic for stop audio export const stop audio if sound if it's currently playing you want to, to stop it. It's the same thing. Not stop, but pause. So sound that pause. Okay. Yeah, and that's it. The last thing that we need. Finally, we will import this setup audio function. We will import it to our main.js. Okay. We call it so we have the audio in our scene. So go to main.js, import this setup audio. Okay. 
it's uh, not an, a default export, so don't forget the curly brackets. You know that, I know. Run. Audio guide. And then just call it here. In the main.js. Set up audio. And you pass the camera as a parameter. Yeah, you are passing the camera because you are using it here in the audio guide file. You see, you are using the camera that you attached the listener to the camera to be able, you know, to create that uh, 3D experience as you move in the scene. But you don't have any camera here defined in this file. JavaScript doesn't know anything about this camera. So yeah, you have the camera here because you are getting it from setup scene. And that's why you pass it here to use it also here. And that's it. We now have a working audio guide. I don't think we have any errors. Oh, okay. I need to restart it. You see here, start audio guide, stop audio guide. Yeah, I need to put the audio file in my project because I don't have it. But yeah, we should not have any problem. We will test. Let me add the file. Okay, guys, before we continue with the new functionality of the pointer lock controls to enable or disable them when we press a key, I just want to add a small fix for the audio guide file because sometimes you may have some issues on playing the audio. Okay, you will wait for it and it will not play immediately. And this is due to the asynchronous nature of audio loading in JavaScript and how the Web Audio API handles playback requests. And here is an adjusted version of this audio guide file that maybe should work more reliably. There are just a few lines of code, really. So we create first a new variable and this variable will be called buffer loaded and by default it will be false. Okay. This flag is to track if audio buffer is loaded or not. And here when we are using this load method when we are set in the buffer and set in the loop here we will set the buffer loaded to true. This will set buffer loaded flag to true once the audio buffer is loaded. Because yeah, we are using it, we are loading the sound here. We are setting the buffer, setting the loop volume and also the buffer loaded, it will be true. And why? Because here, when we are starting the audio and here we have the condition if sound is true. So if there is a sound, we will add And so if sound, but also buffer loaded, true. So if there is a sound and if the buffer loaded is true. So check if the buffer loaded before playing, then sound dot play. And that's it. This is the fix. And that's all. It should be better now for the asynchronous nature of JavaScript. In this version, buffer loaded is a flag that tracks whether the audio buffer is loaded. We only allow the audio to be played if the buffer is loaded, okay? So that's why we set buffer loaded to true. This approach ensures that we don't attempt to play the audio before it's ready. 
which can cause issues or inconsistencies. However, please note that it may still take some time to load the audio data, especially for large files or slow network connections, during which the audio cannot be played. So keep in mind that. All right, let's continue fixing the pointer lock controls now. And here we should go to the file event listeners because here is where we will make the changes for the pointer locks. At the top, we will introduce a new variable, lock pointer, which will keep track of the state of the pointer lock. Okay? If it's true, it means that the pointer is locked and we are in the game mode. If it's false, it means that the pointer is unlocked. We can interact with the UI elements. Okay? So let's introduce this new variable and follow me step by step. So let uh, lock pointer. And by default, it will be true. And also another variable for the menu to show it uh, when it's unlocked or not. So let show menu unlock. And this by default is false. So this Two new variables, lock pointer and show menu unlock. Lock pointer will help us know the current state of the pointer, whether it is locked or not. Simple as that. Show menu unlock will be a flag that determines if the menu should be shown when the pointer lock is locked. Simple as that. Okay. Now we should change a bit our code. And what we will change are this key down, key up and unlock. Okay. So first of all, we will change uh, the unlock to show the menu or not. And here we will change the second parameter, which now is simply the show menu. Okay that we get from menu.js to show the menu, which is a module, separated module. But here we will change it a bit. We will add a condition. Let's add first a function. And this arrow function, this arrow function We'll check this condition. If show menu unlock, okay, then we show the menu. So if this flag is true, then we will show the menu. Simple as that. So we simply call the show menu. Okay, that, you know, we have it imported. And yeah, else the show menu unlock will be false. So show menu unlock will be false. That's it. Too many comments, but yeah. In this part, we add this event listener to the unlock event. So we check whether to display the menu when the pointer lock is released. And after, after that, we reset the flag back to the false value. Okay. Now, next thing we want to do is to create a function to toggle the pointer lock. So let's create this function. 
and let's call it toggle pointer lock. So function toggle pointer lock, it will take as parameter the controls and inside the function we will check the condition to toggle it. If lock pointer, so if it's true, the variable lock pointer, which initially is true, then we want the controls to be locked. That's why we have the parameter controls, because we want to set the controls to lock or unlock. Okay? So without getting confused, if you see the code, it's way easier. So the condition if lock pointer, which is the variable that we just created, if lock pointer, what we do? We lock the controls. So controls dot lock. Else, if the condition is not met that what we want to do, we want to set the controls to unlock. So controls dot unlock. Okay, so we have the controls as a parameter, we will call it in the main JS, etc, etc, etc. But also in the else block, we also want to set the show menu unlock to false, right? Show menu unlock will be false. I hope this is clear. The last thing that we want is to toggle this lock pointer here. So lock pointer equal exclamation mark lock pointer which is basically set the boolean value to 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 its the contrary so set it if it's true make it uh, false if it's false make it true this is the meaning of this exclamation mark but yeah i know that you already know this i'm just reminding you the basic things Okay, so this toggles the lock pointer variable that we created at the top. Just toggle. Okay. And that's it for this part of code. This function is called when we want to toggle the state of the pointer lock. If the pointer lock is currently locked, meaning that the lock pointer is true initially, we lock and vice versa or vice versa in English. We also toggle at the end the value of lock pointer at the end. So this function is keep it up to date with the actual state of the pointer lock. And this is done. So now that we have this function toggle pointer lock, we can toggle now the pointer lock when we press a key. That's what we wanted to do, right? We wanted that press a key and toggle the pointer lock in game mode or using the UI elements. So being able to use the mass events. Okay. Since now we are not able to use the mouse events on click because the pointer lock controls won't let us. So with this function, we will disable or enable them based on how we want it to be. So we want the pointer locks to move, but when we want to click something, we want to stop and deactivate them. 
and simple as that we will do it when we press a key so this is a custom way function to to make this to solve this problem that we had that some people requested in the comments okay so we have this function toggle pointer lock let's create a condition no not here but we will create the condition inside of this onkey down event because there is where the event keys are registered so you see event keys in key press that we have an object if you uh, forgot we have this key pressed that if you want to check it quickly okay it uh, has all these uh, values false or initially and then we check them if they are pressed etc so this is to control the event keys that we press the input by the user and here on this function on key down that is the event that checks if we press a key below this condition that we already have we will add our new condition so if we press the space bar we will choose space bar for this we can use any other key but i think space bar is uh, yeah it's uh, better it's practical so if we press the space bar we toggle the pointer lock so if it is true it will be false if it is false it will be true we toggle it if having that key the same equal oh equal for the space bar is just an empty space here we toggle we call the function and that's it toggle pointer lock and we pass as a parameter the controls here this is this space bar making again the summary of this function will be used to toggle the state of the pointer lock which means that if the pointer is currently locked it will be unlocked and if it's currently unlocked it will be locked okay it's uh, playing with words this is a convenience feature for users to easily switch between the game mode the immersive mode and the UI interaction mode that we can use the mouse events. We can also add other checks for other keys that we want to use. For example, we can set a key to start the audio. We can set a key to stop the audio. We can set a key to show the menu. And many other things we can do all of them okay maybe we can use uh, now the escape key so if we press the escape key we want what we want to do if we press the escape key we want to set the controls to unlock okay press the escape and it will be unlock also we want to to show the menu so we will set the show menu unlock variable to true uh, let's do it with code so it's easier to to understand so again the same thing if even that key equal escape which is the code for the escape key we want to do a set of things first of all we show the menu we press the the escape key we want to show the menu if we are let's say uh, with the pointer locks you know we press escape show the menu stop the pointer locks or you know the exploring mode so first of all call the show menu then uh, we want to set the variable to true the show menu unlock which is uh, responsible 
to check the state for this. So show menu unlock to true. Also, we want, as we said, to set the controls to unlock. You don't get to be confused with lock and lock because, you know, for the controls. But I think now you are familiar with this. So set the controls to unlock. Also, as with the menu, we want to change this variable that we had at the top. So the variable that which is responsible to track the state. So log pointer, we set it to false in this case. Okay, so the log pointer is false. And that's it. We also have this for the escape key. Okay, you see, I press the escape key, I show the menu and set it the unlock controls. Okay, so it works. What else we can do? We can add also the enter key to start the game, to start uh, the exploring mode. So if we press the enter key, what we want to do? Let's say uh, now we have the menu. Okay, so what we want to do, and the, also the controls are unlocked. So if we press the enter, we want to hide the menu. And also we want to set the controls to lock and set the variable for that. It's easy. It's this, the same thing. You can do it without my help. So if even that key equal to enter as we said we want to hide the menu first so called hide menu okay that you see we imported a hide menu and show menu from the menu js which we have here Okay, you see we have two functions, show menu and high menu, which basically will styles, they show or hide, simple as that. Where are we? Okay, we are here. So if we press enter, we hide the menu. Also, we said we want the controls to lock. So controls dot lock. Okay. And don't forget to set the variable to true. So the variable is responsible to, you know, to chat, to be set because with that variable, we keep track of the state of the pointer locks. So lock pointer, set it to true. Okay. And that's it. We also have escape. We have enter and uh, we have the space key. Okay, guys, I was testing it. So the toggle pointer lock when we hit the space bar doesn't work. And let's check. Okay, I see a few issues here that we should fix. But first of all, let me change this variable name. And then we fix the issues. OK, 
Okay. So the issues are two issues. The first, no, three issues actually. The first are these two event listeners here. The first are these two event listeners here. We should pass the event and the controls. Also, we should pass the controls here because, yeah, of course, we are using the controls. So we should pass here as a parameter the controls. This is a space, should be correct. So the only thing to fix are these two event listeners. Okay, so let's fix it. So here on this onkey down, let's pass the event create an error function and on this on key down, let's pass the two parameters event and controls. Okay. The same thing for on key up. Okay, it should be okay now. Here we have the controls. Here we have the controls. I think it should work now. Let's try. Pointer locks are enabled. Let's press space. Okay, it works. Ah, okay. It works the first time, but the toggle doesn't work. So this is correct, but the toggle doesn't work. So the second time that I press the space doesn't work. And probably is the problem here. Okay, I saw it here. You see controls that lock. The parenthesis. Okay, we should call it this lock method. And yeah, I think. Yeah, unlock parenthesis. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the issue. Let's try. Press space. It works. Okay, press again. It works. Yes, now it works. This is fixed. Okay, now that we fixed the pointer locks controls toggle, we want to add the functionality that we discussed previously. So we are going to help the users interact with our 3D scene by enabling them to click on paintings, which will then open up associated web pages. Something that uh, many of you wanted to, to have. The main components of these features are first the click event handling, then the ray casting that we didn't cover, the painting object interaction, and to break it down with the explanation step by step, uh, let's see the code that we are going to create for that. First of all, let's create a new module and let's call this module click handling and first thing first we want to import the three import three from three 
okay and before creating the function because we need the function click handling we need two variables okay so these variables are the mouse coordinates and the ray caster that mouse we create a new vector 2 for this so from the 3 new 3 that vector 2 and for the ray caster let ray caster new 3 that ray caster Okay. Now, we created this module and now we will create a function with the same name, uh, click handling, that will accept some parameters. So, function click handling. with the parameters renderer, camera, and paintings. Arguments, actually. So, renderer, camera, paintings. Okay. We don't have this defined anywhere in this file, but you know by now that we will call this function here in the main.js and we'll pass, you know, the camera, etc., etc. I will create this function and will explain it after writing it down uh, what I wrote and why and step by step with the explanation of it okay but uh, the first thing is we want to register an event listener for the click event so each time a click happens we want to register it in the screen so Later, we know if this click was in the painting or not. So, access the renderer, then the DOM elements, and we attach an event listener to, to, to this uh, DOM element. Sorry. So, add event listener. And it will be a click event. Then with an error function that we pass the event to, to use it. And here we will use the coordinates for the mouse for the X and the Y uh, coordinates, okay? So here, uh, the mouse that we created, the vector 2, mouse.x, and we should normalize this, but I will explain after writing it. So mouse.x, uh, we assign it to the event that client x okay divided uh, you have heard of this window dot inner width and window dot inner height do you remember inner width and we normalize it for those that uh, don't know what I'm talking about, I will explain. Minus one. 
and the same thing for the y and here inner height okay here we registered an event listener on the click event okay Ah, sorry, I have a just a small bug here. This is plus. We registered an event listener on the click event, and each time a click happens, we normalize the mouse uh, position to a range of minus one to plus one for both X and Y. This is because 3.js uses this range to represent the screen space. We then call the onClick function, passing the camera and the paintings as arguments. So onClick, pass the camera, the paintings. Okay, and this is done. Don't get confused by this formula here. It's just to normalize the coordinates for the X and the Y, because 3 js uses this to represent the screen space. And that's it. Nothing, uh, you know, to be afraid of. Yeah, I have a small typo here. The next step is to implement the raycasting. And we didn't cover raycasting. We wanted to cover it when we uh, made the collision. But I found an easier solution. So we didn't use raycasting on that part. Uh, since we want to handle the click event using uh, this raycasting technique, the raycaster, to, to explain it uh, simply, is an object that emits a ray from a specific point in a specific direction. This ray can be used to check whether any object intersects with it or not. Okay. In our case, we are using it to see if the user's mouse, uh, when it clicks, intersects with any of the paintings that we have in the scene. Here, we create the function uh, on click. We pass camera and paintings. Then we access this raycaster and we have a, a method here set from camera. I will explain. And we pass the mouse and the camera. Then we create a variable for the intersects. Cons intersects and assign it to raycaster that intersect objects method intersect objects okay objects not object and here we pass uh, what the paintings what we want to intersect paintings In this onClick function that we just created, we use the raycasters set from camera method, which takes the normalized mouse coordinates for X and for Y as arguments, and also the camera. We then use the raycasters intersect objects 
to get an array of intersections between the ray and the paintings. Each element in this array represents an intersection and it contains information about where the intersection occurred, what object uh, was intersected, etc. Et so, we have this. The next uh, step would be to handle the case when the intersection does really occur. So, if this intersects array that we mentioned is not empty, it means that the user has clicked and uh, it was a painting there where we clicked. And in that case, when it happens, we grab the first intersection, uh, which will be the closest painting that the user uh, clicked on, and we will perform our desired action. In this case, we will just open a new uh, web, web page. We will be redirected to, to our shop, our landing page, etc. So, to implement that, add the condition if as we said, if this intersects array is not uh, empty, and for that in JavaScript we check with intersect if intersects is greater than zero, here we create uh, first the, a variable to, to access the painting, so the first one. Painting, sorry, const painting. The first uh, that we get in the array, so intersects uh, uh, index zero. That object. Here, perform the desired actions. Okay, we can console log. We can console log here the the clicked painting. So, clicked painting, and here we pass the title of it so we know what we what we click and that is we get it from painting data painting title where is the title so info title okay but this is the user data object which is here in painting.js this user data so so here to access it painting that user data that info that title okay since we are there we want simply to to open an external page so for that we use window dot open here and we pass the link that we want to open. We can simply add here the URL, but it will be added here in the user data. So a new property here, uh, URL, and also add it here. Yeah, I already added here the URL. So for that, I can simply Back. Oh, okay, I have it. Oh, I have it. Oh, yeah, I have it. I can simply add the link here. And we also have the URL here. So for that, uh, we can access this uh, the same with painting user data info link. Painting, user data, 
info link. Open it in a new page. So black. And that's it. It should work. The last thing here is to call this function, click handling in the main.js. So we can also get we can also get these arguments, render, camera, and paintings. So here import it. Click handling. Okay. And let's say here, call it click handling and pass render camera we set and paintings, right? Render camera paintings, render camera paintings. Yes. Let's try now if it works or not. We disable the pointer locks first. Now we click. It doesn't work. Let's see the console log. On click is not a function. On click, why is it lowercase? It should be uppercase, right? On click. Yeah, it was a typo. Disable the pointer locks controls. Click. But nothing happens. Oh, if intersects greater than zero, if intersects that length, it's an array, but I don't think this is the issue. Yeah, exactly. This is not the issue. Oh, okay, so this is for 3JS to normalize the screen space we set from minus one to plus one. So this is minus here. This is minus here. I think this is causing the issue. Yes, it works. That was the issue. If we click here, nothing happens. If we click on the painting, it intersects and it works. So it organizes the paintings. Okay. And this is done. You see also it's console locked. Clicked painting Van Gogh 2. Click painting Van Gogh 3 or Van Gogh one. So it works. And that's it for this part of the tutorial. I think we have implemented this feature that was requested. We also added the audio guide. Maybe we go and implement the VR support for our 3D art gallery. What you think? It would be nice to make a tutorial on it.
but I will think and we can maybe add another tutorial about WebXR. Tell me your thoughts and if you would like to add this WebXR support for our art gallery or not, or if you have any other suggestion. Thank you for following me and see you.